The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is the Four Center podcast feed, and this episode is one of our deep dives, our Bakta tank of talk. We are going to descend into the tank, <laughs> surrounded by soothing gel, and discuss some deeply conflict-filled lightsaber fights from Revenge of the Sith. I'm very excited to be talking the magic of lightsaber fights. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. I'm Ken Napsack. I sat down with a coffee and a croissant filled with ham and cheese this morning and said, let's look at these fights. And then it is the tale of two moral choices. And these fights are way <laughs> deeper than I, I mean, I knew they were deep, but they're way deeper than I thought. I can't wait to get to them. And I think, sir, you made a smart call splitting Revenge of the Sith up into as many episodes as possible. <laughs> yeah. And maybe it's two right now. Possibility of three. We have to discuss. <laughs> anyway, before we get into the magic of lightsaber fights, the first part of Revenge of the Sith, we want to let you know that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com slash four center over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iphone android kindle or mp3 player or any device that you can make sounds come out of we are recommending shadow of the sith by adam christopher a recent star wars novel we did a deep dive into that book and really enjoyed it so if you would like to give it a listen you can by downloading a free audiobook at audibletrial.com slash force center. One more time, that's audibletrial.com slash force center for your free audiobook. All right, let's get into lightsaber fights. We have been having so much fun talking about them because lightsabers themselves and the duels in particular are so key to just what is fun and thrilling about Star Wars, what can hook you at any age when you first watch it. Uh, but also the duels are so full of the core themes of Star Wars. Who is fighting for what and why? What is their technique? All that kind of stuff. We've discussed the original trilogy duels, the battles of the Phantom Menace, and Attack the Clones, and now we're talking the first two big battles in Revenge of the Sith, Obi-Wan and Anakin versus Dooku, and Mace versus Palpatine. Now, Ken, before we even get into that, uh, I haven't been planning to talk about Obi-Wan versus Grievous, because for me, it feels like so much more than just a lightsaber fight. How, how do you feel about that? Oh, yeah, it's a fist fight, too. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> it's a chase. It's, it's a, a chase. blaster fight. It's an organ sack fight. Yeah, and you know, it's... I, it, you know what's funny? It, it's, it's, it's almost, I'm almost, I can't believe I'm saying this. It's almost not fair to Grievous. Because he's not a force user, I almost don't count it. But that's, that's not necessarily fair. <laughs> or Ken, right. I don't know if you've heard that he's been trained in the Jedi arts by Count <laughs> yes. yes, but he, you know, I don't know how many rocks he's lifting. So uh, there's something about it. Yeah, it's, it is totally, totally a different feel. I, I, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, it's really, really fascinating. That's, I think, a part of just the progression of them, right? You start mm -hmm. at A New Hope and like, well, that's it's very clear where the lightsaber fight is. And then as yeah. things go on and on, like, you know, different characters use lightsabers. We're going to get to The Last Jedi and one of the big uh, lightsaber fight scenes is we're going to do it with the Praetorian Guards because that is mm -hmm. a lightsaber fight scene. And yet yeah. <laughs> it's not a duel. And all of these, uh, these various things are pretty fascinating to see how it evolves and how the use of lightsabers and the frequency of lightsabers evolves and how it makes it think of what kind of scene this is you know yeah 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 if we had, if we end up discussing it at all at maybe next week's episode or whatever it, it might be like a, a b-side to a good single released by a band where we're just like hey here's the but also here's a cover of a britney spears song that's gonna be like <laughs> our <laughs> grievous kenobi discussion yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to talk about this uh, B-side lightsaber <laughs> conflict, partially lightsaber <laughs> conflict, right? Uh, yeah, so we, we'll talk about it because, hey, it's Obi-Wan and it is one of the major fights of yeah. Revenge of the Sith. But for now, I'm really glad that we paired these two fights because they are uh, so connected in theme. I think they're really connected in sort of a fighting style and uh, just the weight of the scenes definitely being lightsaber duels. Uh, but some of the absolutely most famous parts of the scenes being the bookends <laughs> at yeah. the beginning and the end of the fights uh, for both of these. So I first just want to go for like big overview to Revenge of the Sith itself. Going back to 2005, what was your big reaction to a film with just so many fights in the movie? Were you excited 
that Revenge of the Sith was just going to be packed full of laser sword conflict back in the day? I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's fun to go back to that time frame, but then time as a way of washing over all of it, like a lava river over a, a planet. <laughs> uh, I, I was I was so geeked up for that lava planet showdown, right? We, God, when that hit in that trailer, when we saw, oh my God, and I don't remember when I first started saying, oh, that's Mustafar. I just, you know, oh my God. The Return of the Jedi novel promise. I was so excited. I think I just, even after coming out of the first viewing of of the film, I, I think I took the other fights for granted. Like it was just, mm. it was all there. But now uh, going back, you know, th- this movie, I get the love for Revenge of the Sith uh, now more than ever. And this this movie is a double main event, great undercard, and and this is what we kind of dreamed about on the playground, right? Just lightsaber fights anywhere you looked, even if there was a droid with four of them. Like it just was. Fun lightsaber fighting all around. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I, I got excited for them as time went on. Yeah, I, I just remember being thrilled. By the time that we had reached uh, 2004, early 2005, a lot of my friend groups uh, had really soured on on the prequels. And, and it was just, it was the, the uh, topic du jour was, I don't even know if I'm going to see that one. And I was... <laughs> So, so excited for it because I felt like even if maybe the the film has some rocky parts, some bumpy parts, we're going to have this epic fight between uh, Obi-Wan and Anakin and thinking like it's going to be like the Phantom Menace fight, (laughs) but like 15 minutes long because I've been watching those behind the scenes videos of them practicing and Nick Gillard talking about it. So I knew that there was this main event as you talk about it, you know, the Mm -hmm. showdown on the lava planet. So thrilled for that. And I, I even got a question. We were doing like a Q&A in a live comedy show. <laughs> One of them was, mm. you know, about Revenge of the Sith. And I was like, yes, you should see it because of this fight. <laughs> um, but then seeing in the trailers that, hey, this is Palpatine has got uh, the red yeah. blade out. Um, Mace is really going to be able to get into the mix. There's going to be more with Yoda. And I, I remember thinking, I haven't seen that much in the trailers about Dooku, but something's got to happen with Dooku. So I remember like <laughs> counting to myself, like there must be at least four lightsaber fights in one yes. film. Uh, and, and for me and my fandom, it was, you know, growing up with the original trilogy where the fights were cool, but the, it didn't take up as, as much real estate in the films. And then yeah. Phantom Menace was the, the faster fights of the the Jedi at their height. And then, you know, Attack of the Clones, we finally saw multiple Jedi with blades, Yoda fights, and Revenge of the Sith was like this, this dream of unrestrained Jedi and Sith action coming into full blossom. A full bloom indeed just blades everywhere uh and all all of it uh, all of them clashing yeah abs- absolutely and, and the fact that um we'll talk about it obviously in more detail but the fact that we we start with one right we're right there <laughs> uh again I, I i took it for granted because i just kind of again 2005 ken i think it was like 29 years of age i thought i was old older than i was i just was like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. lava planet let's do it Let's go. Let's get to the lava planet. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think for myself now, knowing that this is the one that's uh, packed with lightsaber fights, when you look at the lightsaber fights as thrilling action and fun to study the choreography and all that, mm-hmm. uh, it's still thrilling. But in terms of the storytelling, the fact that Revenge of the Sith is packed with lightsaber fights is just so deeply sad, right? <laughs> because it's so <laughs> symbolic of this is what the Jedi are trying to avoid in this film. And everything that happens in it is what the darkness of the Clone Wars have led them to, which is just near constant violence and conflict, you know, yeah. in uh, the Obi-Wan Kenobi series and in the original trilogy with Yoda and Obi-Wan, they're so cautious about violence. And you look mm-hmm. back at this film and like, well, this is why. Look at this. It's just endless, endless violence and conflict. Yeah, well, well said. It, it, you know, without you know, without a doubt, the, the lightsaber fights have a certain thrill to them. That's why we're discussing them. So, you know, when you're ten years old, going, I'd like to see a lightsaber fight. You don't hear Akbar in the corner going, "It's a trap! It's a trap!" <laughs> like the, the, you don't want that. Uh, so, therefore, I kind of view this um, film and the fl- fights in it as it's a bit of a crossroads to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's about the fights and the amount of fights. And all roads in Jedi and Sith history kind of lead to this. And then going forward, there are less because the Sith won because there was too many fights. It truly yes. is a crossroads. And they shall have peace. <laughs> According to Palpatine's lie. 
His lie. All right. <laughs> he smiles. I just, we've talked about that scene so many times. It will again. But this morning, I was laughing in that devilish way of he's, and we shall have peace. Grin. Yeah, <laughs> just, and just the, the change in gears once more. That's this. Well, rule the galaxy. And we shall have peace. It's it, the, the lie is so, you know, apparent in his delivery. So great. We have a lot of Palpatine lying to talk about because honestly, <laughs> that's kind of what's going on, I think, in these duels. We're going to talk yeah. first about Dooku's demise. We're talking Obi-Wan and Anakin versus Dooku versus Palpatine's true plans. Uh, this starts at uh, around the 11 and uh, minutes and 32 seconds mark if you watch on Disney Plus and lasts to about uh, the 15 minute mark, uh, 25 seconds. So about four uninterrupted minutes from Anakin and Obi-Wan walking in to Anakin saying his fate will be the same as ours about Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, and I actually just want to start right there. This is kind of unique in lightsaber fights. It's uninterrupted. There is mm. no other scene that we cut to. It's just this. Uh, how do you feel about that? That's a, a great point. I got to tell you something. All these years, I've never really stopped to think about that, sir. That's some great information. <laughs> yeah, truly. No cutaways, nothing. No fights, nothing else going on, even though there's we see one in the window. We know oh, yeah. what's happening. But, yeah, that's a great point. I, I like that. Yeah, but we don't cut to, you know, oddball or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no clone pilots uh, having horrible fates or anything. Yeah. Uh, Arvel Crinid Sr., not there yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. All right, let's talk a, a big picture on this fight. What are your current feelings on this duel, and have they changed over the years? Uh, they absolutely have. And I talked about a, a fight, a main event, a, a card earlier. And I'm going to talk about another Force Center favorite topic, food. This is a great appetizer for the main courses to come. Uh, I cannot tell you, uh, there are not enough words for me to stumble over to say how much I love the opening of Revenge of the Sith. The music, the fight, the everything about it, even some of the silliness. Uh, and this is the anchor for all of that. And, and you said, what, four minutes? That's That's so short. But it seems so powerful. Uh, and I love it. Uh, we're going to explore a little bit about the journey of Dooku. I love it for the end of Dooku um, and how much I, I just kind of love that character. We've discussed a lot about Dooku's journey up to this uh, and how a lot of uh, the Clone Wars content maybe ties back to this moment. There's some thoughts around that. Um, and and, and, and uh, I absolutely um, love it. Uh, that's where I am now. But i got to tell you, can I say back in 2005, I know I'm focused on the main event, the Lava Planet. But I was really actually disappointed that Dooku left the story this early. <laughs> I had like that theater. I was like, like what? Like first Saruman, Saruman gets stabbed in the back and return of the king. Like you have to get the deleted <laughs> scenes to see them, see him for more than like 10 seconds. And now Dooku is gone. I'm like, let Christopher Lee fly. You fools. Let him. This is like one of the greatest <laughs> villains of all time. What are you doing? Yeah. I remember being bummed, but also feeling like it was, if we're removing Dooku from the playing field this quickly, boy, do we have yeah. a lot of ground to cover. So being bummed for that's it for Dooku in, in yeah. a little surprise, but also being like, oh, wow, if we need to clear the deck, then yeah, <laughs> I yeah. can't wait to see the rest of the deck. Yeah, and I totally look. I totally obviously get it now, and, it, and you know, you got years of Clone Wars content to to enjoy. But yeah, I, I remember having that like little bit of that like George always kills the cool villains. <laughs> yeah no that is true right maul Django, dooku all the new yeah. ones uh, you know uh, got body parts rolling <laughs> <laughs> rolling flipping falling yeah, yeah. um yeah i always enjoyed this one i think because it was just so short vicious and like clearly meaningful like this was a yeah this was a a, a scene where i have uh, learned to appreciate certain nuances more uh, but I think the storytelling is so well done just even uh, in, in what is being referenced in the previous duel in Attack the Clones and also how this duel relates to the rest of what happens in Revenge of the Sith. I think yeah. it, the writing is really good. So the, it, the clarity was there from the first viewing mm. Uh, mm. for me in this fight. Um, obviously, as a big Obi-Wan fan, I was always a little bummed <laughs> yeah. uh, about Obi-Wan uh, being moved aside. And uh, I've always had... Mm. Um, real uh, empathetic sense pain uh, for his buttock uh, <laughs> <laughs> being crushed and how, how strong it must truly be. Yeah. Um, but I always really enjoyed this fight. I think in terms of the thrill factor, uh, the story and the thrill factor, I like mm -hmm. that just out of the gate, we were like, Anakin is much more poised and much more powerful, right? 
So yeah. the question of is Anakin powerful is just off the table. It is. He is. And what is he going to do with that power? So mm -hmm. that was the story element of I liked. But in the just, damn, that's cool. The cutting off of Dooku's hand move was so mm -hmm. unbelievably cool to me, right? Because I just yeah. been obsessed with lightsabers, you know, pretty much since birth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and wanting to see cool new moves that was such a cool weird new move and I remember one of the first things i i did when i got the dvd was just watch that again and again and try to slow it down to really understand <laughs> okay so how does how exactly does anakin pull that off yeah. he grabs him he pulls him forward how does he not cut off his own wrist he must get it out of the way in time and like and <laughs> he cut with enough force that dooku's lightsaber actually flies up that's up. amazing you know yes and, uh, and yeah. the meaning of mm -hmm. the red blade and the blue blade, right? This is a time yeah. where uh, the lack of subtlety and messaging is appreciated, right? It's so mythic. It's, you know, yeah. to have both. So I always really, really appreciated that. Uh, so I, I, I like the fight in, in, in the, uh, from the beginning. But mm -hmm. over time, in all of our great discussions about Star Wars and hearing other fans' thoughts and, and what has uh, resonated through the years, I'm really struck that almost every line in the scene is either deeply significant to the story, to the themes, or just extremely fun and quotable and memeable and gifable. Like yeah. every line, when, when we were trying to write down kind of favorite beats, I was like, I can't just transcribe the scene, but I would like to. <laughs> Same, same, same. I was like, I got to leave Joseph some of these. I'm just going to run through all these moments. Yeah. <laughs> so that is, I think is, is powerful to me that they, all of the lines have lasted either through depth or just being fun, quotable lines. Um, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Then over the years, uh, I think I've just appreciated all of the nuances of Anakin's choice in this moment and the nature of Palpatine's manipulation and how it ties into uh, the later manipulations in the film, which we'll talk about. Uh, mm. Final big thing that's changed for me is you and I have often talked about how we read the film as mm. uh, Dooku being truly shocked that Palpatine is thrilled that Anakin won and that Palpatine wants him dead. Uh, and, and to this day, that's how I read the way that Ian McDermott delivers that line to Dooku of kill him, kill him now with the little head nod of like, mm -hmm. yep, you fool, y you should have understood the game, but for some reason you didn't. For some reason you thought you were different. And somehow I wouldn't want to get rid of y you. Uh, yeah. You know that's the game. And somehow you thought you were different, you fool. Uh, and then Dooku's just look of shock uh, of like, oh, I didn't realize that this is what it was about for him of, of using Anakin to get me out of the way. So that's right. the way I've always read it. You and I have talked about it. Uh, there is that this quote from Lucas in the Star Wars Archives book, the 1999 to 2005 one. Uh, basically saying that uh, that that Dooku was aware that it was a test for Anakin, that this situation was a test. Um, so I wanted to be able to uh, to both discuss how we read the film, yeah. but also take that information on board. And as we go through discussing this scene, uh, reading it with that, with Lucas's stated intent, that Dooku was aware that this was a trial for Anakin. If Dooku was aware this was a trial for Anakin, uh, how does that tell us more about the fight? And how do we leave room for what is clearly on his face, which is shock <laughs> yeah. at the end of this trial? Uh, so I want to just uh, share where I was coming from. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, it, look, it's always fascinating. Those archive books, I, I, I keep uh, yelling about them. They're just so great. And, and, and George has so much uh, valuable insight. So this is, um, I love it. And, and um, what, what I, you can't erase Christopher Lee's face and how it's being played. You can't. But also the quote you're talking about here from Palpatine. It's so it's kill him and then looking at Dooku, kill him now. Ha, huh? fool. And I think it all uh, tracks. I think it all works because even here is the, some of the, the more famous quotes about Christopher Lee about Dooku. And he's just a hey, he's immoral. He doesn't care about any, anything, anyone, just himself and power. So, yeah, of course, you know, I think of Lando and Darth Vader, you know, Vader changing the deal all the time. Mm -hmm. So, of course, Duke was <laughs> like, yeah, 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 it's a test for Anakin. I'll probably kill him anyways. He'll fail the test. I, I can I can go go that direction with it. And I think it syncs up. Um, it syncs up nicely because I think it's all there. It is interesting to, you know, and, and again, you also got to track sometimes when George says things. We know this. 
Uh, mm -hmm. It could be, uh, you know, the timeline of his words is just as important as his words. Um, but I, I think this is, uh, uh, I think it's all there. I, I, but I think it's a one-two punch. It's that palpatine Dooku connection of, oh, yeah, 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 no, this was a test. Oh, by the way, yeah, you are going to die in this test. Oh, did I not mention that part? Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I think that's the way it, it reads the best uh, to me looking at the rest of the text of Star Wars, that there's always this game with the Sith Master and Apprentice of we know the game is the Apprentice is supposed to kill the Master and the Master is supposed to constantly test the uh, Apprentice for being yeah. worthy enough. Um, but within that, there is always this like, okay, but who's going to kind of push it, right? And we see that in the yeah. Clone Wars animated series with Dooku kind of pushing it with Asajj Ventress. <laughs> yeah. And Belpatine going, she's getting powerful. She's an assassin, not a Sith. And you're kind of making her a Sith, so knock it off. <laughs> yep. And then we go to the original trilogy, and there's this whole game between Vader and Palpatine about Luke, right? right. Of well, it's always been the rule of two, but hey, if he could be turned, I'm not saying he'd be the apprentice, but hey, he'd, he could be another assassin for us, like mm -hmm. the Inquisitors. And to me, even then going forward to Return of the Jedi, like we talked about that fight of, of what does Vader think is going to happen if Luke is successfully turned, you know? Right. Does he think that, oh, and now Luke's going to be our agent, or does Vader know? And if Luke is broken, then Palpatine's going to try to get Luke to kill me. I'm probably dead, uh, which uh, relates directly to this fight in this scene, right? Yeah. So I really take it from is this scene as if Palpatine did say to Dooku, uh, hey, we're, we're setting up the end game of the Clone Wars. I want to draw in Skywalker. I think we can turn him and then we'll use him like we've used all these other agents. Yeah. But not necessarily like, hey, I'm going to set up a fight between you and Skywalker. Uh, <laughs> best yeah. Sith wins. And you're out, you know? Yeah. I yeah. think Dooku must have been approaching it from, well, of course I'll destroy him. Yeah. Uh, and even if I don't, uh, he's just going to be some little piddly agent that I'll deal with. Yeah. No, I, I, absolutely. And, and it tracks with a lot of stuff going on in the Clone Wars. You mentioned the Asajj stuff. Yeah, it's it's always a, a push-pull with Master and Apprentice on the Sith side. So, uh, and, and that's that's the game, right? That is the deal. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're my master until I kill you, until I come up with something better. <laughs> Like that's just that's the devil's deal. They're all taken. So uh, yep. I think it all all shows on the on the face of Christopher Lee. Now, absolutely. What I really was not expecting that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we kind of already delved into this a little bit with Dooku. We can talk some more, but let's talk about the stakes for the characters. What is at stake? Why are they fighting? What is victory for them in their minds? How do they win this fight? Uh, where do you go with the various characters involved? Well, I'll start with Dooku. I, I went with this direction here. It, it was almost like another day at the office for him. <laughs> it's power, <laughs> domination. And, uh, you know, this is uh, what makes a Sith good here. It's, our, it's a good day at the office here. And we're, we're also trying to, you know, move the war forward towards an end so that we can truly uh, take over and all the things we've built and worked for. And I, I think he's, I think even knowing it's a test, even knowing he, here it is a big battle, I think the glee on Christopher Lee's face uh, prior to his final moments. I, I love some of the beats with him. The, the whole, the, 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 you know, the good, the double the pride, double the fall and all this. It's just, I think he's excited. I think this is just a great way to play with more power. And that's a, what's at stake is the status quo, keeping that for him. Yeah, yeah. I think getting to this end game of the Clone Wars uh, so that he can move on with what he wants. Because I think in Dooku's mind, uh, and this is just uh, me uh, assuming from the character mm -hmm. uh, that, yeah, he wants to get these Clone Wars resolved so he can find whatever assassin he's going to have up his his sleeve and he can take out Palpatine and yeah. he can rule. He can have unlimited power. The sooner this game is done, uh, the sooner Dooku can make his move, whatever it's going to be, right? Absolutely. Um, so I think he's just, yes, I, he's, he's trying to finish, uh, help Palpatine finish, move the chess pieces in place. But Dooku's actions in the actual fight um, so those are kind of big picture motivations for what does he want internally to the fight uh, do track with him kind of being aware that it, it's a test to see if this Skywalker kid uh, can take mm -hmm. it to me uh, because I, it, it makes sense to me that Dooku is fighting to remove Obi-Wan from the fight right yeah he it, it's good tactics in general to separate the the fighters but he's force pushes Obi-Wan away uh, then they both go up the stairs then he gets rid of Obi-Wan and just really not he doesn't kill him he takes mm -hmm. him out of the fight. So it really is just like, <laughs> I got to move this chess piece out of the way so I can focus on on this Skywalker kid. 
Yeah. And yeah. if Dooku is uh, aware that it's a test of Skywalker, if Dooku wants to prove his power, this is just him proving once again, like the Sith process is uh, the master is forcing the apprentice to prove himself again and again. This is another tedious step in proving himself to Palpatine, right? Um, yeah. And it uh, just does not work out the way it's worked out every other time and the way Dooku <laughs> thinks it's going to work out because Anakin is just more powerful. And, yeah. and that, in the sort of the testing makes sense of the, for me, of Dooku's goading mm-hmm. to Anakin mm-hmm. of like, okay, you, I sense all this anger, let it out. Uh, and oh, this yeah. has always been one of my favorites of like, uh, I always imagine a comedy beat where Dooku's like, you know, you have hate, you have anger, but you don't use them. And then Anakin lets go. And I always imagine Duco going like, okay, okay, stop yep. using them. <laughs> yep. But that, that energy is absolutely there. It's absolutely there in his face. Uh, you know, uh, you're so right. So right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, for, for Palpatine, um, I, I think he, he's getting exactly what he wants, right? He wants to mm-hmm. break Anakin. He wants to get rid of Duku. And it really just seems like this great bonus if he could get rid of Obi-Wan too, that would be so great. It's not his main <laughs> thing he's doing today, but he'd really like it as a side dish. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You went out to pick up the dry cleaning. On the way home, you got a sandwich. Win-win. Just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> on the way home, Obi-Wan Kenobi dies because I do yeah. like that that tracks through so much of the storytelling that there is this fear oh, in yeah. Palpatine of Obi-Wan because he is kind of unbreakable in his morality and maybe he's the one Jedi who's been close enough, kind enough to Anakin to make a difference. And Palpatine just needs to break that bond, you know, Mm -hmm. tracks through even to later when he says all the Jedi, even your friend, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I think that's, he, 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 it's pretty clear what he wants and he gets what he wants with the exception of he doesn't get the bonus death of Obi-Wan. Yeah. 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 No, which is another great moment. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I like, um, there's a little bit of, uh, we keep saying endgame, but I think it's true. And it's Palpatine just kind of, uh, you know, finally getting to, you know, these final beats here and, and, and the end of this long plan. He's been waiting a long time. So I think he's got a little bit of glee in this. Yeah, yeah. And for Obi-Wan and Anakin, what do you think about for what's in their minds? What What is uh, what is it mm-hmm. that they're going to get out of a victory in this scenario? Yeah, a tale of, tale of two uh, victory conditions, right? But all mm-hmm. pointing towards the same direction. For me, I start with this idea of, of, of Kenobi. You know, it's the end of the war, but perhaps in the most just way possible. He's there to fight. The blades come out. No secret there. Uh, defending the big picture. But he, he understands the the how you fight is just as important as, as fighting sometimes. Those big themes he loves talking about. And I go to the line, he says, you won't get away this time, Dooku. Uh, he's not saying, you're going to die here today, Dooku. We're gonna, you're going to pay pay for what you did some of the stuff we heard anakin saying Dr. Collins, i think there's this uh, we're here to rescue the chancellor we're gonna capture you take you in and man what a great way to end this war it ends all ends here today in the most uh just uh dare i say peaceful with blades way possible and i think that's in <laughs> kenobi's mind no i totally agree i think this is classic obi-wan wants to defend this yeah. was an attack on coruscant this was an attack on the chancellor he is there to rescue the chancellor and mm. capture Dooku to help end the war. This is all about ending the war, right? Yeah. And I think it is so great that we already know from uh, Attack of the Clones that uh, Obi-Wan is not a fan of politicians in general. <laughs> <laughs> He's not particularly a fan of the Chancellor, as he makes clear later in this film that he's been, you know, grabbing all of this power. Uh, so Obi-Wan is there to defend not Sheev Palpatine. He's there to defend the chancellor right Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. the importance of that position this is an attack on democracy on the agreed upon you know way of of government in the galaxy that the separatists are trying to tear down uh so i think it's really fascinating to be like obi-wan planned this he's risking his life and it is truly conceptual it is truly you are not the power palpatine you represent the power you represent the idea Mm-hmm. of democracy and that is what i am here to defend if it were up to me <laughs> i would vote you out of office you know yeah. seven years ago i not a yeah. big fan but you hold this position and that's what i'm defending 
Yeah, I mean, the, the, the famous memeable you know, Kenobi scream about democracy later, uh, it mm-hmm. definitely applies. I think that's absolutely a through line, and I think you're right to point it out. You know, he probably just as, uh, if, if it was Chancellor, uh, you know, uh, Finis Valorum, he'd be here as well and, and maybe a little more happier. But yeah, and I, I like your idea on that there. Uh, it, it's, the, it's the concept. It's the big picture. Yeah, and, and I think it's this great contrast where Anakin in the beginning of Revenge of the Sith, I just love Anakin because it really feels like he has maybe taken stock of some of the the times toward the end of the Clone Wars animated series where he's lost control, right? He's really mm-hmm. given into his anger. He's, he's kind of driven Padme away and then back again, and he's lost Ahsoka, and he's out there in these endless uh, Outer Rim sieges, and he's just, he's really trying to walk the path, right? Mm. Um and he's coming in with that mindset, but there's all these things pushing and pulling at him, right? And yeah. there's this great contrast to me that Obi-Wan is no big fan of Sheev Palpatine, but respects the office <laughs> and the meaning of it and the structure of government. But for Anakin, there's all that that he can he can say the same things as Obi-Wan. He probably will. Like, I'm defending the, the, right. the chancellor uh, and what that office means. I need We need to stop Dooku in order to end this war. Uh, but also that's his friend and mentor. And he mm-hmm. personally does not want to have anything bad happen to the chancellor. And Dooku did not only, you know, hurt him by cutting off his limb, uh, but he also wants to prove his power, right? The fact yeah. that he says my powers have doubled since the last time we met count is making this about him and his ego. So mm-hmm. I think he, Anakin is this conflicted mess where like on the surface, your actions are in line with Obi-Wan. They're in line with the Jedi. You're really striving to live up to the Jedi ideals. But there's all this, this attachment, this promise to himself to never let somebody he loves ever be hurt again, to be powerful enough to make that happen. And Chief Palpatine uh, fits in that mold. Uh, not as much as Padme or his mom, but still, he's a friend and a mentor, and he wants to have the power to protect him, you know? Yeah, no, it's great to put all the, the stuff from Clone Wars, particularly the stuff in Season 7 that we now know, and just kind of put it on a, on, on a line, uh, in, in a line on a table, on a plot table, and seeing all the stuff at, at playing his mind. I think you, you're right about that. And and I, I, I refresh my memory, she, the name Sheev doesn't pop in until way later in our lives, right? I believe the Tarkin novel by James t- Lucino. That's that's right. So he's not saying Sheev, but the, the difference between <laughs> I'm we're going to go rescue the Chancellor and we're going to go rescue Sheev is is you know important. It's it's very much the, the the way they're both looking at it. So I still think Skywalker, with all that in his head, all the attachments, all the unease, all the fear, it's it's a lot at play there. I, I, I the the same goal of let's end the war, but to do it via total domination. Uh, this thing we have now uh, with thanks to the Kenobi series of just Kenobi saying so directly, it's just, you know, how, how you look at victory and how you want to go about getting victory. Uh, he went in there to kick ass and take names, right. And do it for the, for, for his personal good. Um, mm-hmm. So to your point, again, it's all wrapped up in the same package from his point of view. We're Jedi and we're winning wars. Ain't that grand. Uh, but it's the way you look at it. That's going to start to be his undoing and it unravels. It begins to unravel here with that blue and red blade. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like their different attitudes toward the situation are so great in the way they greet Palpatine, mm-hmm. where Obi-Wan just has a little, the little bow and says, Chancellor, like it's really about I'm yeah. giving you the respect to the office. And Anakin personally asks him if he's OK. You yeah. know, it, it's there's a real difference in how mm-hmm. they talk then, which, of course, makes sense for their relationship. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let, let's move on then to just the environment. How does the location of this fight help tell the story or increase the thrill factor? Oh man, it's really good. It's 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 almost like the um, the anti Return of the Jedi throne room or or the upside <laughs> down version of it in terms of Anakin's <laughs> moral choices. Uh, but the dilemmas are kind of the same. It works. This whole setting works to in that it drives home the idea that this is Palpatine at his best, therefore his worst, uh, and he's sitting amongst the destruction and pain he's created and pulling all the strings he spent years attaching. Right? It's true Star Wars theater to me. The throne room in Jedi, and now you got a command center, command deck on a ship, but it's the throne room. Right? It's built. Uh, chair. He's spinning around in chairs. He's overlooking <laughs> battles, and it's just such perfect. And we all you can make fun of it all you want out there, but the Star Wars poetry is very important here, and it just kind of adds to the thrill. If you pick up on it right away, 
I, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a dumb late twenties kid new 2005. I wasn't playing, playing around with the themes in my mind, but you're like, Oh, Hey, that's just like the movie I saw and love, you know, it's the same. I get what we're going for here. And I love that about return of uh, revenge of the Sith. Um, going to what you were saying about the red and blue blades, I, I, I think as much as, you know, we always say we love going deep here uh, on Force Center. We love hitting on things that maybe you, the listening audience, haven't touched upon. We love discovering things for ourselves. Like, oh, I haven't looked at it that way. I, I think Revenge of the Sith, more than any other Star Wars movie, might be like, here, this is what it's about. <laughs> Look at it. It's on the screen. And the colors, the shots, the seeds, the the, the settings, and and this this environment definitely just adds to all of that because you get the bigger picture at play. Yeah, no, I think a lot of the larger ideas uh, about Palpatine's manipulation of Anakin and and the entire galaxy and, and the hubris of the Jedi and uh, what what really caused their fall, I think, are really driven home in this film. Mm-hmm. But they're so fascinatingly mixed up with all this very pulpy, very over-the-top stuff, which we'll talk about even more in Palpatine yeah. versus Mace Windu. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I absolutely love the the very clear connection to the throne room in Return of the Jedi. The chair, uh, these sort of inverted stairs where the stairs are going up from him rather than going down. Uh, they all lend to that same mood that makes Return of the Jedi powerful, that this entire space is a stage and the fight is playing out for Palpatine's benefit. Like he is the puppet master and laid out before him are his puppets and he's just watching them dance. Yeah. And you know, we can joke back and forth about the actual clip where Lucas says the Star Wars poetry line. And fair enough, even the people in the room with him are a little bit like, huh? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. You can, you can, you know, play that clip and then the Larry David theme song and all those things. But yeah, I think what matters is, is it effective to you? Does it help tell the story? Does it create any resonance that makes you think about mm-hmm. all of these movies as one big story? And for me, yes, that's yeah. what's powerful about this is that Palpatine's tactics remain the same. He wants to uh, mm-hmm. manipulate people to get what he wants. And there is this sort of great uh, painful irony that in Return of the Jedi, he is the emperor of the galaxy on his actual throne, mm-hmm. you know, sitting atop his, his giant laser that he's going to use fear to control the galaxy. He is totally in power in every way. Yeah. Uh, and then in this scenario, it looks physically almost exactly the same. The events are happening the same way. He's goading a Skywalker into using violence so the, so the Skywalker will kind of become his. Uh, he's even in a chair that looks like a throne. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in this scene, in the total opposite of Return of the Jedi, he appears to be in captivity. Yeah. All of this is to rescue him. He's chained into his throne. And that to me is where the power comes from of this is the story of the prequels. He, he uh, plays this card of poor me and he is, he appears to be in captivity, but he's utterly in command. And it just speaks to the story of like, yes, he has power. He is the chancellor uh, of the Republic. uh, But what is really giving him power is all these manipulations that he is doing without people truly seeing what he is. And the height of that is to be sitting in what the audience emotionally recognizes as a throne pretending to be in bondage. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And also we want to mind that I might add here, uh, pretending to like be rooting for uh, and like yeah, do and all those things. And, and yeah. by the way, you know, I think there's some wonderful unintentional comedy from uh, Palpatine McDermott's performance that I love, like love with all my heart. It just yeah. is is some of my favorite stuff, and it is kind of uh, you know over the top and 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 how it's supposed to be. So I love watching this fight where it's just kind of like yeah, ooh, uh, get him. <laughs> it's just and it's all like <laughs> man, do you act? Are, are you just do you go to sleep at night pretending and acting and fooling no one? But you're like, are you practicing this in the mirror? Like it, it's it's great. I just love it. It adds to the theater of it all. It adds to the theater and it adds to just him, you know, being in his happy place, uh, which yeah. is one of the other things that struck me about this of it's kind of what's going on in the whole film, this idea that the endless conflict is, it's a sad uh, state of affairs for the Jedi. It's not Mm -hmm. what they want. It's a necessary, necessary thing sometimes, but they do not want to linger on it. They don't want to revel in it. And here he is reveling in it. It's his, it's his happy place. He's, Mm -hmm. (laughs) he's practically eating popcorn, right? This cold, 
sterile space with uh, people fighting in front of him, behind him, it, it, the, out in space is a sea of just death and violence mm-hmm. and conflict. And it's, I almost take it like he's just, he's into it. Like, yeah, yeah. fight fight the robots, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> violence, yeah. death everywhere. <laughs> Actually, Four stars. You're very right. He could be rooting for all of it. Like, I don't know, I'll kill Anakin Dooku. I don't care. Like, oh, this is great. He's just having a fun. It makes me think of Return of the Jedi in the throne room when he's like, good, good. He's just, <laughs> this is this is what he loves. Yeah, conflict is awesome. And mm-hmm. then final thing for me on the more just straightforward uh, thrill side, staircases. Hey, uh, yeah. they're always good for flipping. They're the connection to the early swashbuckling films like Robin Hood where, you know, some of this lightsaber inspiration uh, came from along with, of course, uh, you know, samurai films uh, and, and stories and reality. Uh, but staircases are always welcome in a fight, uh, a lightsaber fight to accentuate the drama. Yeah, no, I agree with that. So what realities of filmmaking do you think about when you watch this fight? Uh, you know what? I, I, there's, there's a real lean into the digital filmmaking in Revenge of the Sith and Attack of the Clones, but George is at his, uh, hey, let's push this tech forward uh, best. And at times, some people might say worse. I get that side of the conversation. This is very clearly, for the most part, a, a digital set. And, and I was looking at it this morning, like, this is kind of George's volume. Like, right? This is like mm-hmm. the, the early drafts of it. And and uh, maybe thinking that Kathleen Kennedy uh, is part of those uh, Disney galleries. I was like, nah, George was like, he wanted to build this down the hill from the ranch. Like, this was, this was something that's going on in his mind. So at times, this is one of those, like, gen- generic critiques of the prequels. But this fight, I don't know, plays a little too clean for me at some times. I, I love the design and look and everything you, you and I are talking about from the, the, the upside down of the throne room, the reverse stairs, everything. It's a great great arena so don't don't get me wrong but i look at it and i it just seems somewhat clean you get some of them even obi-wan fallen uh, it's the realities of how he chose to film it uh and you either you just kind of accept it and live with it or or, or you don't um and yeah, once again christopher lee is a moving head um but you know what at the end of the scene that's all you need because christopher lee's face is telling just a thousand words <laughs> with one look. So I love everything about it. But uh, yeah, you know, coming out of the theater, that was some of the stuff that's in, in my mind. And it's still there when you watch it, if you want to engage with it on that level. Yeah. And, and literally a moving head at the end with his head bouncing. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think about the the kind of the storytelling structure that it is different um, than uh, than some other lightsaber fights. In particular, just kind of the the brevity of the fight that it's needed for the forward movement of the plot, right? Uh, this beginning of Revenge of the Sith, in some ways, is the like most adventure serial, where it's this lightsaber fight is one chapter of a long multi part adventure serial of yeah. Obi Wan and Anakin, you know, rescuing the Chancellor. It looks like it's all heroic, but it's not, right? Uh, ultimately, because it's all a manipulation. Yeah. But we have this space fight. We have Obi Wan and Anakin on the ship, uh, ship battling up to this uh, this command center. Then we have this actual lightsaber fight that is this descends into sort of this brief moment of true darkness. Obi Wan is unconscious, and we can all see the truth and feel the truth. And then we're right back at the fun of the attempted mm-hmm. escape, the conflict with Grievous, the crash landing. So I'm fascinated about the way this lightsaber fight sits in the middle of this kind of thrilling fun adventure serial multi-chapter introductory adventure and then kind of right in the middle of it is this this scene that is this thrilling little poison pill of truth of this is what it's really about <laughs> poison poison pill don't bite down on that poison pill uh, no uh, no absolutely yeah i love it and i still again this this opening of this film which is not really an opening it's its own kind of short film it goes for what it was close to what this is it 30 minutes by the time that the, sh- the ship lands on Coruscant. It, it's yeah. It's a bit. I mean, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I haven't uh, stopped to count, but yeah, definitely, it's 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 yeah. up there. It you know, and even more as we know, cut out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> to keep it moving. Um. Yeah, and then for me, the, obviously, the CGI is definitely a part of it. Um. But in for me, the the CGI Dooku looks better. Uh. Mm-hmm. Than Attack the Clones. I really don't notice the. Uh, the moving head, as you call it. I I'm sure it is there. I just don't notice it as much because I think the way it's intercut with the glorious close-ups of Christopher Lee's acting yeah. and the the way the lightsaber fight is choreographed uh where it is these big sweeping emotions in my eye just goes really to the bodies and, and the movement in that kind of especially in that last phrase of the fight once uh, Dooku has a uh, <laughs> uh mm. unfortunately for him convinced Anakin to uh, yeah. release his anger and hate uh that stuff uh that 
part of the fight looks so good to me that I don't concentrate on the on the CGI Dooku head. I do uh, concentrate on the CGI Obi-Wan's uh, buttocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's no way to not to, for me to not see that as yep that that's an element of it that they mm-hmm. uh, did not literally throw a stun actor <laughs> <laughs> and then have a large panel uh, collapse on their butt. And, and and you know after spending so many years pointing that stuff out, and this still goes to even some of the conversations I start about the volume. After a while, I just get tired of hearing myself talk about it. You either enjoy it or you, or you don't, or you just accept it for what it is. Uh, yeah, they didn't toss a stunt man up against the wall. You're right. What yep, are you going to do? Yep. And it, could it have been uh, shot differently? Yep. yep. But I also just kind of feel like Obi-Wan's pain isn't the point of this, right? It, yep. It's that we, we want to be focused on Anakin. It, it really is uh, Dooku succeeding at kind of removing Obi-Wan from the fight. So it is truly about him and Anakin. Yeah, absolutely. And good point. You accept it or you don't. And it's always fair to criticize it if it distracts you. Uh, so be it. So let's talk about favorite moments from this fight. Uh, if they're thrill, if they're emotion, uh, we both struggled not to write down <laughs> Every line, yeah. I'm really curious to see which ones that you did write down. Um, I mean, I kind of think you got to start somewhat at the beginning with Chancellor. Sith Lords are our speciality. I mean, <laughs> especially what we're talking about, Obi-Wan and his, uh, his uh, butt being crushed there. I mean, this is, uh, you know, it's a line that's often questioned. It's a lot of humor uh, it attached to it. But, you know, hey, he, he sliced Maul in two. Uh, he didn't, you know, you can't account for spider legs, as we talked about earlier. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just love that. It's a great start. It's a great energy. I love it. Mm-hmm. You're, you're about to have a fight and uh, you need some you need some pithy remarks. And I like it. Yeah, no, I love it. It's just great Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, style of mm-hmm. dialogue, of diction, of word choice um, and of great Ewan McGregor delivery. Um, so even if he did not uh, fulfill the promise of Sith Lords, our speciality in this fight, he does yeah. in almost every other fight he has with a Sith Lord. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give some Obi-Wan a wide berth. On yeah. that, and it and it is great because it, it's also just uh, playing up this this contrast we talked about, where Obi Wan is there because it is his duty to protect the office of the Chancellor, yeah. he, not not pals with Palpatine. Um, so to have that Palpatine, like you know, just kind of poking him and him being like, ah, mm-hmm. back off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we did all this work to rescue you, and this is all you have to say. You know? Yeah. 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 Uh, so what are some other moments for you? I, I mean, we got to talk about uh, what I already said, though, but a good double the pride, twice the fall. It's a great read. It's also one of those kind of Dooku, not lying things like this is potentially what's at stake. You get to go into this fight with all this pride. Uh, you're going to fall really hard there. Uh, so I just, I just love that beat, too. Uh, again, you need some you need some remarks. You need pithy remarks and, and lightsaber fights from time to time. Yep. No, I think that is a great taunt uh, mm. and, you know, get, it gets gift and all that stuff, but it is really meaningful to everything that's going on yeah. in the prequels and in the film. It certainly uh, uh, applies to the Jedi with uh, their hubris in, in their own power, not seeing how bad uh, things had become, uh, mm-hmm. being allowed to be pulled into the Clone Wars. Um, but it also relates uh, to Dooku's own imminent death, right? Mm. If he is aware that, okay, the, the, uh, my master thinks there's some potential of breaking Skywalker. Pff, I don't think Skywalker's all that. You know, I've right. fought him a bunch. He's nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll taunt him a little bit, and then I'll, I'll take his head, and we'll get on with our day. Uh, so it definitely uh, applies to Dooku. But it's also like I, there's a part of me that wants a joke video where uh, Dooku pops up and says this line again. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the film, because it so applies to Anakin's <laughs> final moment, right? Yeah. Uh, where Obi-Wan says, don't try it. And Anakin's line is, you underestimate my, my power, you know? Yeah. And you almost want to have Dooku ringing out, twice the pride, double the fall. <laughs> I told you so. Uh, because it really is cut. about that, like, you know, twice the pride, half the limbs. It, yeah. <laughs> my math yeah. doesn't work on that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, no. Again, it's it's one of the things I love about Dooku as a character. He he might be one of the only ones who just kind of saying some hard truths does make him a, a you know insightful or good or but he just kind of knows the lay of the land and he and he knows how to manipulate that knowledge and and mess you up with it and get in your head over some of the things. And uh, I don't know. It's one of my little favorite Dooku lines. 
It's a great one. It is an absolutely great one, and I think it has some some weight and some power to it and some Star Wars poetry. Uh, what are some more lines for you? Or moments? Uh, yeah, or moments. Uh, yeah, the, the, the combination of uh, uh, Dooku, he does this super kick to Anakin, then force chokes and throws <laughs> Kenobi into the scene you and I have been talking about. Uh, the digital asset goes up against the wall. Uh, you know, it's just a reminder of how powerful he is. And he is a Sith Lord. He may look like your, uh, you know, uh, stern grandfather, but he's been around and he knows what's going on. He's fueled by the force. He's fueled by power and greed. And, and so he's got some skills. And uh, I just like that little one, two punch, that one, two, three beat uh, action. Yeah, I really like it, too, because, it, you know, it, it does get into sort of a, a, a force user fighting logistics, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? In the way that I read it and enjoy it is that, you know, Dooku is kind of leading them one way of like, look, I'm an expert swordsman and we are going to have this kind of fight. And he just suddenly uh, shifts uh, Mm -hmm. to making this sort of like surprising move because he knows what the fight is. He knows what he wants, which is to separate uh, Obi-Wan and Mm -hmm. Anakin and just kind of imagining it from poor Obi-Wan's perspective of like here. I thought we were having this tense, precise lightsaber fight. And just suddenly this just wall of hate grabs my throat, you know? Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. It, it, it really reminds you that he's a Sith Lord, and this is that, that he that he has you know access to that just kind of anger and hate. Yeah, power of the dark side, the purpose of the dark side to to separate, to break connections that might lead to any kind of uh, light side winning. Uh, yeah, absolutely, all there, and it's all there in a beautiful super kick. Boom! Right there, yeah, it's, a, it's a real nice super kick. <laughs> yeah. Not you right now. I'll get to you in a minute. Um, I want to just go back for a, for a minute. One of my uh, favorite things early on before o- poor Obi-Wan gets out of it is uh, I like the the phrase of their, uh, you know, lightsaber fight as Obi-Wan and Anakin both attack. Uh, but they have that kind of opening phrase where they kind of all, all test one another. And then right before it cuts, uh, Obi-Wan has a cool hair flick. <laughs> <laughs> Where yes. he's 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 all tensed, he's all down, he's ready to continue the fight, and then he just does like a a totally cool. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, my hair was in my eyes, a little bit, <laughs> but let's keep fighting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like he's, all right. it's like, yeah, he's uh, he's trying to impress the the memory of Satine. You know, <laughs> my hair cool. It's my hair cool. <laughs> yeah, I just love that that shot is in there. Um, so uh, by all means, continue in in your list. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I'll jump ahead to one of the the. Um, the, the final moments here, and again, it's only it's only a four minute fight, but wow, what a world! Beautiful four minutes. Uh, you talk about yeah, Dooku um, really saying again some truths and what he senses in Anakin and, and all the big things at play. And you're right, Anakin is like, fine, you little bleeper. Let me, I'll tap into my anger, and there, that's a beautiful final flurry, and it does mm-hmm. lead to the chopping of the of the hands moments. We can we can discuss more. And you're right, that blade pops up. Wow. Um, but it's just, you know, um, and, 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 and yeah, I meant the Dooku floating head, the Christopher Lee floating head. I definitely don't think about it here. It's just, it is the intensity and it is, you can be drawn in by, as a, as a fan, you could be drawn in by Anakin having that upper hand and taking that upper hand because it is cool. There's a lot of momentum to it. He's just charging back. Dooku's on his heels and I really like it, but it's, it's just such an easy thing to get caught up in it and see where it leads and where it takes Anakin. It is truly one of those things where, Anakin slash Vader, all the power in the world, and he never truly gets what he wants. And I think this is one of those little moments of that that, that works for me. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I, I think for me, yeah, m- almost everything I like is is that the that phrase in, in the lightsaber fight. The um, I sense great fear in you, Skywalker. You have hate, you have anger, but you don't use them. Um, I, I really like that. Is hey, Dooku is taunting him, seeing if there how much dark side there mm-hmm. is in him, and if he is willing to use it, can he can he break him quickly and I think, as we see in lightsaber fights, sometimes when when people give in to the dark side, sometimes it gives them focus for a moment. Sometimes it just totally unbalances them. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's this surprise <laughs> where mm-hmm. uh, Anakin does not become sloppier when he unleashes. He becomes cool yeah. and cruel and precise, right? Um, and uh, so I just, I love the taunt of like, you should use these. Oh, no, you did. Um, <laughs> is this Ooh. joking about. But then the actual the the overhead style when when they both switch to that, which is mm-hmm. similar to the way they fight in Attack of the Clones, which a lot of this really does lead to. Anakin has become more powerful. He has become more confident. Right, mm-hmm. he is not afraid 
of Dooku. He has he has great fear, uh, but it's not about a fight with Dooku. Um, and I just I, I, one of my favorite parts of this is those huge sweeping blows where they're both using that style that looks like it should be kind of dangerous to mm-hmm. leave your body so unguarded to do those huge sweeping blows, but it is clearly you know a form of fighting. Uh, yeah. And it, it I love that it feels like. Anakin lures him into this style of fighting with these huge sweeping mm. blows and then zips in with this little surprise grab and cut. I agree with you on that. Absolutely. Especially if we fought him a few times before, especially now during the Clone Wars we saw. So yeah, I think a little bit of that. And I love your point too, of just like, you know, that is truly a test. Anger, you know, fear, hate, all these things we, we hear and we, we get warnings about and and how Anakin's like, wow, it, it just, it not just does make, doesn't make me stronger. It makes me focused. It gives me the victories I need. What a wonderful lie to buy into. Mm-hmm. A wonderful lie to buy into indeed. I, I should ask, uh, we have the line here of, you know, early on, like this time we will take him together. I was about to say that, um, which in, when this movie came out in 2005, you could absolutely imagine they've been fighting the Clone Wars for a long time, but they haven't fought Dooku again. They fight Dooku many times in the Clone Wars animated series. Does that bother you? Do you have some justification? Where do you land with that? Look, man, we all have inside jokes with old buddies. I, I, I referenced things 20 years ago, and it's like a continued conversation. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 uh, I understand it, and it's one of those... Uh, uh, things that are there. And, and, and I think sometimes the answer for me is, yeah, you know, George didn't know he was going to do the show. So um, I'm glad we got the storytelling we got. And, and uh, it has the weight. Uh, there's a lot of great moments between the three, 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 uh, these three characters fighting the Clone Wars. This one has the added weight of end game. And mm-hmm. as, as the one of the attack of clones did where it could have been uh, pregame, I guess it could have ended. The game could have ended before it started. Uh, and so I think Kenobi's calling upon that kind of memory and energy. Like this is big. Don't bleep it up here, kid. Don't bleep it up. Yeah. This isn't a skirmish on forum. Cause Hondo kidnapped one of us, right? This yeah. is, we're above Coruscant. The chancellor's there. We, this war has been dragging on and on and on. We've been out in these outer rim sieges. Uh, this needs to end. Uh, you know, we're both Jedi. You're not a Padawan anymore. And our strength is doing this together. You know, yeah. I feel like it is, it, it works for me because it feels like it is referencing all of uh, what is happening in, in their, in this moment. And also this whole uh, long half hour opening adventure serial, a lot of it is about the connection between Anakin and Obi-Wan that they are, that they have these different personalities, but they are brothers and they mm-hmm. are in sync. And this is that reminder of like, yep, no, we are lockstep. We're together. We're doing this together. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Going then for me to the kind of final uh, favorite moment of thrill and emotion is uh, that end uh, with Palpatine convincing Anakin to take action. A good Anakin. Uh, Kill him. Kill him now. And then perhaps one of my up there moments in Star Wars, if we ever had to do the painful uh, ranking, just plain old favorite moments. This would be a contender. The shift in voice from Palpatine, mm. from the "I am a Chancellor" to actually "I'm a Sith Lord." Yeah, <laughs> the, kill him, kill him now, do it. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason "do it" is so popular, and a part of it is that that shift of dropping the mask a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's excitement. I just read excitement from Palpatine. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, and that like deeper, darker voice. It's almost just like it is. It, mm-hmm. It's funny, but it's also it is like it is just cutting through to the worst of Anakin's instincts and giving them permission. You know, yeah, yeah. It it and I I love everything about it. The red and the blue blade. Um, obviously we've, we've all seen memes of uh of Anakin's frozen face <laughs> yeah, yeah. as he makes the cut. Uh, there is that weird, upsetting, uh, scratching sound in the soundtrack that makes it clear that this is not a cool victory. That this is sad and awful, and then I, I, that yeah, just sorry. silence. Yeah, so I noted that too. It's one of my favorite things. A great sound when he cuts that head off. The music, the cue, the scratch, everything you're talking about is pitch perfect. Right, it, like it's it, it it's really clearly telling us in the filmmaking this was not a victory for Anakin. You know, right? right? Yeah. Uh, so along those lines, uh, how do you feel about the morality of Anakin's choice? Was there ever a moment where you were like, "Yep, great," or? Uh, how do you feel about it now? I I think the best way to look at it is just 
overall, because I'm trying to remember, maybe, I don't know, maybe in 2007, I was like, good job. He did the right thing. I can't remember specifically. I just, I just look at it overall as this great lie, but it's filled with enough justifications for you to lose sight of the good decision. Uh, mm-hmm. There's enough going on, uh, and, and this is going to factor into the, the second half of our conversation, as we know. Uh, and it, 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 it's easy to be like, you know, this is what you need to do. It's a Sith Lord. It was a Sith Lord. You got to do this. Uh, but I love how this is discussed and viewed later on in other Star Wars storytelling. I, I believe it was uh, season seven Clone Wars, right? Where basically mm-hmm. there was that whole thing of, well, Anakin killed a potential source. So good job, Anger Boy. We don't have do. We don't know things. We're, we're without information. Um, and so, so much is lost with his violence. You can't initially see it, especially from mm-hmm. that moment. And there are dangerous absolutes in this victory for Anakin. We know what he wants. We know his condition of victory, his his pride, and all that stuff there, and what he what he's trying to protect. But so, Anakin, Anakin to me, Anakin to me didn't consider um, the big picture. This felt like end game, but even here right now, it wasn't. And he didn't see any of that because he, he there was enough enough wiggle room in the morality of it to get a let yourself get away with it. Yeah, he he really does let himself be manipulated and lets his darkest instincts out. Yeah, I love that. Um, you know, later in the film, Obi Wan says, like, you know, you you did everything. You you saved the Chancellor. You killed Dooku all while carrying me on your back. Um, mm-hmm. so Obi Wan is seen as complimenting Anakin's skill in stopping Dooku. But then I love that we get the layers in Chapter Seven of mm-hmm. the Clone Wars where. Uh, Obi Wan is aware that Anakin is not doing well. He goes to talk to Padme. He's reaching out to Ahsoka to try to talk to Anakin to help uh, center him. And he does have that, like, sneaking suspicion that there was something not right about, like, he could have maybe taken Dooku into custody, but he just killed him so we don't know Mm -hmm. who the true Sith Lord might be. Um, I think adds this great nuance to it. And it's it's why it is so important that Obi-Wan is unconscious, because if Obi-Wan saw the way this happened, uh, that would have been stop the presses, right? That would have been no. Yeah. Um, and, and Palpatine knows that. And I think what this scene to me is, uh, what is so powerful about Jedi philosophy, about what Yoda tells Ezra and rebels about, you know, yes, we have to fight, but it's how we fight that makes a difference. Uh, I think that the Jedi need to stop the dark side, right? They need to stop Dooku. Uh, they need to stop the clone wars. And that is absolutely Obi-Wan's goal when, when he walks in there. It's like, arrest is ideal, but if Obi-Wan, in, in pure defense, cut Dooku down during the fight, it would be like, ah, I, I wish I really didn't have to do that, but I, I know in my heart this was defense, right? Yeah, yeah. If he's killed in combat because there's no other choice, because, you know, it was either uh, Obi-Wan cuts him down or he cuts down Anakin, it'd be like a tragedy that Dooku gave him no choice, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's not what's happening here. This is this sort of ideal situation where he is, he's stopped. Uh, he can be taken in for questioning. He can be arrested. I don't know how you're going to put cuffs on him because he has no hands, <laughs> but <laughs> leg chains, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Knock him out. Um, but the action of the Jedi are trying to stop the Sith, and sometimes that means killing them. But what is in your heart matters. Why are you doing it? Yeah. And the yeah. fact that Anakin is doing it out of fear and vengeance is something that Obi-Wan would have, would have ap- absolutely seen and absolutely be upset by. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I can only control the situation by complete domination. Boom. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Off. And of course, you know, I want to uh, call out this line that gets established here uh, of all the manipulations that Palpatine is doing, right? Of uh, uh, Anakin is striving to be a good Jedi, right? He knows he should uh, yeah. uh, arrest him, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and Palpatine says that uh, he's too dangerous to be kept alive, right? Um, we're going to hear that again from Mace in, in the next fight we're discussing. Uh, but I'm fascinated, how, fascinated by how that is really fear of the future, right? Mm-hmm. Of not taking things one moment at a time of like, he's been defeated. He can be, most likely he can be taken into custody, but oh, but something bad might happen in the future, right? So it's, it's uh, yeah. leaning into uh, fear. And then Palpatine's big uh, manipulation, this idea that, Revenge is natural. Everybody wants it. I know the Jedi tell you this lie that you shouldn't want revenge, but they're just lying to themselves. They want revenge. It's totally natural. He cut off your arm. You cut off both his hands and his head. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's laying the groundwork for all of the arguments that Palpatine is going to continue to make to Anakin throughout the film 
to gently lead him into just giving the dark side a try. Mm. All of that is based on this both sides are the same argument that yeah. Palpatine makes uh, throughout this film to manipulate Anakin's choices. And I think it really belongs, it begins uh, certainly in the, earlier in the relationship, but in the film, it begins here of like, well, Jedi want revenge too. What you did is totally natural. Both sides are the same. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's big. I think it's huge. I think it's all what's at play in Palpatine's entire, uh, the life and times of old Sheev. Uh, so I think, <laughs> I think you're right to point it out and, 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 uh, and to frame it like that and, and to go in a little bit to our justice for the Jedi ongoing conversation movement around these parts of, I think the Jedi still, you know, they're still striving to be better. Uh, the order may have failed. Uh, the order may show cracks and you don't throw everyone out just because of that. I think Palpatine's got that like, yeah, they get one, you get one, whatever. Uh, it's all, it's all in the wash. It's natural. It's natural. Just give into these urges. Don't strive to be better. Strive to be, uh, what you are, what you feel in this moment, what you feel is fear, what you feel is anger, what you feel is revenge. Eh, yeah. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Lean into it. Do it. Yeah. The anti-motivational poster. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so out of 10 lightsabers fully ignited, how many lightsabers do you personally give this fight? Look, I t we've had a lot of fun discussing this. Uh, this has been wonderful so far. Uh, this might shock you. I'm going 6.5. Mm. which seems low, but it's, it's still passing. Great. It's, it's a good one. And that's only because I think it is short. Um, it's a flurry. It's, it's a little different uh, and it's easy. Uh, it, it should, you shouldn't be overlooked because of the big themes, but there's other fights to focus on, but I'm giving it some bonus. So that 0.5 might even be a 0.75 just on Dooku's look of shock alone. <laughs> exactly. Which is just priceless. Uh, that mm -hmm. look of, Oh, I made a deal with the devil and this is where it ends. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I gave it seven out of 10. Um, it's got uh, not as many just sort of thrills. Uh, to me, it is not like the actual best lightsaber fight, but it's got some cool moments and it has the unbelievably cool moment of the hand move uh, from Anakin to Dooku. Uh, have to knock it down a peg for uh, poor Obi-Wan. Yeah. <laughs> Being pinned by the butt. Uh, but any sort of... Uh, <laughs> Any any uh, marks that I would take off for the actual thrill factor are made up for in the uh, the narrative thrill. There's so yep. much narrative thrill. So seven out of ten lightsabers for this one. Any final thoughts on this fight? No, no. This has uh, been a lot of fun. I mean, this is again, I, this is a fight for for many years. I didn't uh, get the full purpose. Didn't want to engage with it. And I think there's there's so much there, and it's a fun four minutes. It's a fun four minutes that we talked about for almost an hour so we are going to take a quick break and move on to the next fight we'll be back in a moment and we are back to continue magic of lightsaber fights discussing the two big battles in revenge of the sith with many more battles left to be discussed in future episodes. Uh, we talked about Dooku versus Anakin and Obi-Wan and Palpatine's manipulations. We are now on to the battle for the fate of the galaxy. Sidious revealed, Mace unleashed, Anakin's big choice, the very quick demise of Agent Kohler, Saucy Tin, and Kit Fisto. At about uh, hour, uh, hour one in minute 11, uh, the door opens to Sheev's office in around uh, an hour and 15 minutes. Mace goes out the window. Uh, Ken, what are your current feelings on this fight and have they changed over the years? The, the, the first few times out, I, I think it was more held up on, on the beats that might lean towards, again, some of the unintentional comedy or misunderstood moments uh, that, that in 2005 was part of the conversation. So for years, um, I had some questions about this fight. Um, like a lot of it could be summed up by this was it. Like this was the fall. One one beating something he was bad, and I, I just gotta say that's a big whiff. Is is what we're just going to discuss there? This this we're not adding things in later on. This was always there. Uh, it was always there for you to to, to engage with, and uh, I'm thankful I do because this fight, this moment, that again about four minutes, five four or five minutes. That's crazy. It's crazy because um, mm -hmm. I could live in it for a while. It, it is. Uh, it, it's it's some of my favorite stuff, including the crazy Palpatine stuff. It's all there yeah. for you. Yeah, both of these fights are ones for me where the the narrative is uh, so central <laughs> to Star Wars. Yes. The actual thrill of the fight, the construction of the fights, maybe not as bad as good. Uh, so this the fight itself for me 
is a mixed bag. There are some yep. great moments and shots, particularly with close-ups where you just have the pure power and uh, charisma of Samuel L. Jackson and Ian McDermott. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the actual fight, I always wish this one was shot and choreographed a little different, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I would think, always yeah. take a little bit more defense <laughs> from the other three Jedi. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In watching it again, I think this was really fascinating because in my mind... There was more CGI in this one. Uh, but watching it again, obviously there is the moments where uh, it is a stunt actor and we have uh, yeah. Ian McDermott's head and, and there's some of those shots. But there really is only that one cut to like big CGI where Palpatine does some flippies. Mm. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's the corkscrew and then in the middle of the flight, there's only really that one moment uh, yeah. with where Palpatine's, you know, doing some stuff that's clearly not being performed by Ian McDermott. <laughs> and I love too that it might be it's like uh, it's a little Yoda like he's seen Yoda footage of a Yoda fight uh, the, or Dooku was telling him about it he's like I'm gonna do some leaps too I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some leapy leaps oh yeah I'm gonna scream and jump off things that's yeah. good I'll try that yeah. yeah that one shot is not my favorite I think for me the whole fight would be stronger if you just did leave it a little bit more to hey put put Ian McDermott's head on the stunt double here and there and then let the close ups of these phenomenal actors work because I have come to appreciate th- those more and more. Like, I think a little bit, you know, earlier days, I was just like, ah, I'm bummed that this fight isn't as good. I love mm-hmm. the end of it and all all the stuff that happens between uh, Palpatine, Mace, and Anakin. <clears throat> mm-hmm, Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Getting mm-hmm. choked up. Uh, <laughs> but watching it again, there is a lot of great stuff for me in, in the close-ups uh, in that fight. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think the thing that I've come to really, really appreciate in this fight, analyzing it, is... There's a lot of, uh, all, all of the combatants are people who kind of pride themselves on power. Mace is really like, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll end this conversation with violence if I have to, right? Yeah. And there's so much power uh, going on in this fight, but power doesn't end up making a difference. What ends up making a difference in this fight is manipulation and emotion. I mm-hmm. think Mace wins, right? A great right. timed boot to the face. And he defeats Palpatine. I know some people feel that this is a manipulation of Palpatine's part, and uh, I recognize that. Hey, you might be right, but I'm just going to talk about my perspective. I think Mace wins. Um, and it, 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 pure power-wise, he defeats Sidious, and it doesn't get him anything. Right. Because this is Anakin's defining choice. And after all the talk about him being the chosen one, having more midi-chlorians, being more powerful... His power, Anakin's power, doesn't matter. It's a choice. Han Solo could have taken that shot with a lightsaber to Mace's arm. It's not about power. Everybody is using power, and everybody wants power, but power is not the definition of this scene. It's manipulation and emotion and bad choices. Yeah, choice. No, this is great. And and, and to... First of all, you're discussing a lot of things about the actual fight and the shot and, the, you know, how, how it was put together. That that kind of sums up how I engage and how I discuss the prequels these days, right? Where it's just like, yeah, 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 no, I get it. There's a lot of things in there that don't work. But what does work? Because you find, you'll find you find that it's it's pretty powerful what's there. So uh, to going back to that, I love your points there. But, yeah, I, I to this question of um, Mason, I know, I know we've discussed, discussed it before. I, I can see a little bit of column A, a little column B, but I, I it just it's more powerful to me. And you know, we'll look for a George quote that will change our minds or you know <laughs> uh, whatever. It's more powerful to me to to believe that yeah, it, Mace does get some sort of victory here, puts him up over the top, um, but that like you said, it doesn't get him everywhere, uh, get him what he needs. And, and, and that Palpatine once again is like, cool, I can adjust on the fly. Don't worry. Padme wants to go back to Naboo. I got it. I'll figure this out. That makes me a little nervous, but I got it. Uh, <laughs> here's a go. You know, I, I, I love that about Palpatine because I, I, I think um, he does have this great big plan, but he's smart enough to know, unfortunately, that you got to adjust and you got to use what's in front of you and you got to use what's going on in people's hearts and, and souls. So did he intend to lose, to, to have Mace get the upper hand? I, I, I don't know. Cause to me, you'd be like, I, I, I don't know if I can trust that Mace won't kill me. You know, like, I don't know. I don't, I think Palpatine's got to worry about that. So I like, I think it's more powerful to think that Mace got some actual legit shots in here, has a legit victory at his hands. And then the bad guy, as often does in good pro wrestling storyline, cheats to win. That's how you set up your heroes. 
And that's how you make big superstars. Uh, different conversation, I suppose. Uh, so I'm with you on that. Yeah, I think uh, for me, yeah, it's just it's just more compelling, and it's the way the scene is constructed. Anakin, Anakin is is racing there, right? From the yes. the second the fight begins, he's on his way. It's the only thing we cut to is Anakin racing there in the midst of the fight. And yeah, I totally believe that Sheev could sense that, uh, but mm-hmm. I also feel like Sheev is um, he is enjoying this. He wants to cut down Jedi out in the open, kill him himself. Yeah. What a joy. And I think he would love to take out Mace Windu and then hear Anakin coming and cut his own arm, not all the way off, but cut himself and go, look what they did to me, Anakin, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. He was still going to be able to manipulate Anakin uh, regardless, you know? And I think when he gets down on the ground, I think he is feigning greater weakness than he has. Agreed. But in that moment when when Mace knocks him down and Anakin uh, w- walks in, uh, I think that, you know, that was an actual knocking down and Mace getting the upper hand. Um, I also just feel like if the story is he's faking it, um, I, I I would have loved to see a shot where, you know, Palpatine looks away from the fight a minute sensing Anakin. Like you're, there's easily, you can easily do that in visual storytelling, right? Yeah. And you could you could show us that he is throwing the fight. And I just don't feel like that's there in the visual storytelling. Well, I think it's also a good point too. If you just, and again, I know, I know we're analyzing something that might not have a concrete answer. I understand that, but, but uh, to go to Palpatine, uh, to go to your point, uh, Palpatine would love just killing all of them right then and there. <laughs> and I think you're right. He, he'd, uh, he'd, what's that Wahlberg movie? He's going to punch himself until before Anakin gets there. Be like, oh, look what he did to me. Look what he did to me. Uh, and I, I think he'd find a way, he'd find a way to make it work. You know, uh, they cut off, you're right. They cut off my hand. They poisoned me. Uh, go to the temple, wipe them out. You got to. I, I think he would have found a way. And if along the way, he doesn't love Mace, he's got no. No affinity for Mace. So if I could take him out, I'd love to. And that's why I think, uh, you know, uh, keeping what Mace is, one of the more powerful Jedis ever. Uh, he, he gets a, a little bit of a, of a almost false victory there. Yeah, exactly. So we kind of, uh, as we do, lean into this question, but let's uh, look at it uh, closely. For the characters, what is at stake? Why are they fighting? What is victory for them? Let's start with Mace. What do you think is on Mace's mind? What is victory for Mace? I, I think this this uh, Mace and the Jedi, uh, but but it's it, what it's like is is uh, is this truth, right? This truth that the galaxy needs to hear, uh, and, and they won't get to. And, and you talked about Palpatine and his truth and his true plans uh, earlier in the other fight. Uh, is I think victory for the Jedi is, is, is saving the Jedi Order because Mace says then we must move quickly if the Jedi Order is to survive. That's huge. Mm-hmm. That's a huge mm-hmm. thought for him to have. Uh, they get the reality of it. And, and uh, you know, when Anakin comes up and says, I've learned a horrible truth, uh, and, and Mace is, you know, I know I know Mace is very stoic and doesn't overreact. I respect that about him. That's me too, unless it's about dropping a fork. Uh, then I'll lose my cool. Uh, you know, Mace is like, hmm, okay. If what you're saying is true, Anakin, then we're done and we need to go take care of it. So I think that's what's at stake is this, this, this horrible truth that could end the Jedi Order and affect the galaxy forever. Mm, yeah, no, I love that. I, I think that's a great poll. Uh, I think for Mace, it, it is truly like saving the galaxy from tyranny, right? This is yeah. fulfilling the absolute purpose of the Jedi, which is to hold back the dark side. Uh, in, in literal terms, that means Sith Lords are their specialities. The Sith yeah. are the greatest threat uh, to balance in the Force, to peace in the galaxy. And that is the Jedi's you know, purpose up to a point, certainly for somebody like Mace, is to absolutely stop that i think if you track a lot of his his fears and his anxieties that that become clear in the clone wars animated series i think there is also some some hubris and some pride of like Mm -hmm. the jedi can't fall we can't allow this to happen um and i think there is an element of fear of the failure is so close it's so possible he can't let it happen right this cannot happen yeah, well, yeah, you, you've, you've discussed before of even the idea of, uh, great, thank you, Anakin, sit here, boy, while I go take care of this, it has a lot of fear to it, right? It's, it's a lot of, of, of Mace not being open to uh, a lot of possibilities, and, and I've got, it's a sense of control. I got to go handle this myself. I'll take my buddies over here, but I, you know, I've known them for a lot longer than you, so we're going to go handle this. Yeah, no, tracking Mace's uh, interaction with Anakin is keeping him at arm's length, you know, saying mm-hmm. he's, not, is he going to be trained? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, really firmly a no. 
um, and then being concerned about uh, about him putting him and Palpatine together. There is just like a total lack of trust. And he's still saying like, I, you know, I'll go here and handle this. And, and if it all pans out to be true, then you will have earned my trust. Um, that there is, that is a great part of this tragedy, right? If that was Obi-Wan standing above Palpatine, would it have been different? You know, if the Jedi had been kind and welcoming to Anakin this entire time, would it have been different? But it's very easy for Anakin to push away from Mace because th there there isn't trust between them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so for Palpatine, uh, <laughs> mm. I think this is one of the more easier ones to analyze. Uh, mm, yeah. I, I, feel, I feel like he makes kind of a theme statement toward the end of the fight about what this is about. What do you think? Yeah, it's, you know, it's about having a good day. It's just kind of making new <laughs> friends and getting rid of old friends. It's about change really for Palpatine. Yeah, no, this is, uh, yeah, this is, this is the final steps. This is power. This is unlimited power. Yeah, I feel like it's about power, unlimited power. <laughs> um, it is absolutely, you know, throwing things into, into uh, hyperdrive uh, with, yeah. with his gambit towards Anakin. Uh, and really make turning the final screw. I think it is about, you know, so close to Order 66, ready to finally destroy the Jedi. Uh, but I also just feel like it's not really his victory condition, but maybe it's his enjoyment of finally unleashing his anger. Mm -hmm. Personally, directly, not through agents, not skulking around in a cloak, you know, every once in a while, not, not, not going to Mandalore to handle uh, Maul and Savage Press. This is fully unleashing his anger against these sanctimonious Jedi. And, and that, that in one way is the most enjoyable thing about it to me is just his mm -hmm. joy at killing Jedi. Yeah, no, look, it, it's like, he's like, I don't have to waste time with oppressive policies or muddy in the <laughs> waters or being friends with people I hate. I get to finally be who I want to be, which is this evil monster. I, I think that's absolutely <laughs> what's going on with him. Yeah, don't have to phone Cad Bane and yeah. take this or that. Just the blade and the hate's coming out. Yeah. Uh, for Anakin, what do you think is uh, the victory condition? What is going on for him? Yeah, I really went to this idea of, of Anakin. Uh, his, his victory is securing the power needed to protect Padme. And this is why I think he's, he's he is a mixed bag of emotions during this entire sequence in the buildup to it. You know, he tattles on Palpatine, right? <laughs> Let's not forget it. He tattles on him. He does have that encounter with them with, with Palpatine going, I beg you, use my power, Anakin. Come on. And then he runs to Mace and says, I got, hey, 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 Mace, Mace, teacher, teacher. Uh, Palpatine's being bad. And, and, and then he goes and sits and stirs. And during the wonderful Padme's rumination sequence with the great music, I think that's, his attachment really just grabs hold. I think he really grabs hold in that one great, uh, you know, the, the face, the close-ups on his face and, and, and mm -hmm. the tears and, and, and the great stuff from Padme and the wonderful music, some, some of my favorite music in Star Wars. I think he just decides, right, I, I, I'm not going to lose her. I can't, and I need to secure the power. I need to secure the help I need to keep her, and, that, and that's um, that's that's uh, uh, Palpatine. Now, yeah, does he run there thinking, I got, all right, I'm going to slice Mason too? No, no, he runs there just kind of like, I've been kept out. I, mean, I haven't been trusted. I could control the situation. And maybe, you know, he maybe he can still help me if he's in jail. Maybe he can still help me. I don't know, but I just got to get there. And I can't, I, I can't let the, this moment, can't let this power go away. Yeah, no, I think control is such a great word. I, I think Anakin's motivations are are very clearly like, I can't. I can't not be there. I can't not be in control because at this point, Palpatine's life in his mind is Padme's life. Yeah. And I think he makes that so clear. Uh, there's a lot throughout this scene between Mace, Anakin, and Palpatine that connects back to the fight we talked about with Dooku earlier about what is the Jedi way? What is the right way to do this? And we'll, of course, talk about that more. And it's fascinating that Anakin kind of has this like, uh, the motivation that he's telling himself of like, well, it, it, Mace might kill him and that's mm. not the Jedi way, but that's not the, his truth at all, right? And his truth, truth comes out. He screams, I need him, right? Yeah. I need him. Uh, so ultimately, Anakin's motivation is the fear that he will lose Padme and what that will do to him. As he says, you know, briefly, it'll just a little bit later to Palpatine once Mace is out the window, you know, I can't live without her. It is yeah. these... The, the selfish statements of love, right? And again, yeah. 
just a call back, he has had a vision that something might happen to Padme, you know, which is so different than Padme is in the office <laughs> and Sidious is or somebody else is going to kill her right now. It's so different that it is just about the fear of the possibility. And yeah. that is what is allowing to allowing Palpatine to manipulate him so badly. So his that his motivation in his fight is just <laughs> uh, I have to do whatever to save Palpatine because he is the key to saving Padme. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like what's at stake? Padme might be at stake. That's what it, what's in his mind. Which is, which is, we're talking all these wonderful things to, to build to that kind of statement. But this is the kind of stuff I missed in two thousand five. Where I was like, that's all, that's all. Yeah, I thought, well, I, you know, you know, I just, I spent years, decades, just having a, a different idea in my head of how Vader turned and why, and none of them were as compelling as what we got. No, no, it is just total, totally controlling the fate of, of Padme at every second. Uh, how does the in- environment help uh, the story or the thrill factor of this big old fight? Look, if if throne rooms and command decks are Palpatine's home, which is what I think we kind of talked about in the Return of the Jedi fight, kind of going into his home, into his living room, then I think we're in his bedroom. Um, we've gone down one more level in his lair. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, we are really, it, it is tight, it's constrained. The use of that window uh, shattering is great. It's just a wonderful setting. And I like that it is right where he has spent probably many, 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 many hours just concocting the plan, going over logistics, staring at the Death Star plans. Like, this is his spot. This is where he's been, the true, uh, you know, the, where the true Palpatine has been, is what I'm trying to say. And so I love that it's that it's right there, and, and he knows it, and he invites it, and uh, he's happy about it. Yeah, I think the power to me is just the aesthetic of the – the deep red, uh, mm-hmm. the ancient statues in the background, which uh, I believe you can uh, buy small replicas of at uh, Galaxy's Edge, <laughs> uh, probably online too. Uh, but it, it, it is one of those great moments of, you know, you wouldn't want to walk into somebody's office and go, you seem to like a lot of deep red and ancient statues. You must be an evil wizard. <laughs> well, we shouldn't judge. But it is one of those great, like, not subtle, right? Like, that's yeah. what's going on in the office of this is a kind of an, it, it, it looks proper, but it feels uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Um, and I think, so there's just that aesthetic that it all fits, right? That this is where this this guy lives, not lives, but uh, works. Yeah. Um, it also just sort of shatters the veneer of the the lie of the prequels, right? That idea that... Um, this space, the Sith and the Jedi have been doing battle again and again and again, but it's been a battle of words, of manipulations, of assumptions, of, of course, Dooku couldn't be uh, trying to assassinate people. He's a Jedi. It, this is a place where uh, in, in the Clone Wars, uh, Palpatine has kind of gently pushed the Jedi into doing things they don't want to do. And Mace has decided not to push back on that because people could maybe see it as a power grab from the Mm -hmm. Jedi. And this space, this office has been a place of war, but in this kind of safe veneer of we're all working together, we're all friends. Let's, Mm -hmm. Let's not use the wrong fork. It would be very rude to accuse anybody of anything, <laughs> you know, and to see all of that just fall away and shatter and explode into actual physical conflict, you know? Yeah, mm, yeah right there. I think Literally. that's a huge part of it for me. And then, of course, my beloved high places. <laughs> True. Uh, the shattering of the window, that restless wind coming in that just creates, that makes the whole scene this storm of fate, you know, with the wind in Anakin's hair. It's, you know, it's really powerful. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, um, it's again, it's it's kind of an over-the-top moment, the w- window shattering, the, 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 the. The wind, all the things you're describing, and that's what I, again, what I kind of love about it. It is truly a high stakes theater. Yeah, absolutely. So, what real, realities of filmmaking do you think about when you watch this fight? Look, I said the only thing that stands out to me, the only thing, really, truly, the only thing is that Ian McDiarmid is not the world's greatest swordsman, right? And and <laughs> and I love that. But but what what remains, and because what what he does bring to it. And some of the close-up shots you're talking about, and he's such a wonderful performer, it creates this very distinct style and energy that I absolutely love. 
So even though, uh, you know, I'm sure this is a gentleman who's had many years of stage fighting. I don't, you know, I don't know his background, but you know, he's, he's not entirely smooth or, or, or whatnot. Uh, and, and they had to shoot around it in a way, but because of that, it creates this really interesting Palpatine style that is kind mm-hmm. of aggressive and in your face and close and works best, uh, best, um, in that uh, in that way so anyways I, I love it i only think about it and it's like a fun little thing for me you know and we'll talk about some of the, the beats i i think you're right uh with the other three jedi that that get it and it's so quick and there's some awkward shots yeah again this is the dance of the prequel discussion now for 20 years or so uh but what remains is is very much its own thing and and i, and I love everything about it. i love every groan i love i love all that stuff from that so that's the only thing i really think of in, in terms of, of how they had to shoot it or what they uh, did uh with uh, with the scene yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, for me, I, I love the prequels with all my heart and I'm fine to say the things that uh, maybe yeah. don't work for me or maybe a reality of the time. I almost feel like Ian McDermott's actual fighting style is, I agree with you so much, is not a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's just different. It, it, yeah, It really works in the close-up and he, close-ups and he so sells it. And the uh, the number of times he has that kind of saber right out in front of me, stabby motion. It's just, it's so aggressive. And it's so like, hey, watch your gut around <laughs> yeah. around Sidious. Because he's just always pointing that blade directly at your your gut. Um, and then that has this great uh, connection with the way Ray fights in Force Awakens that we joked about at the time. Like, yes. maybe she's a Palpatine because she's doing that stabby gesture. Yes. Which, we joked about on Force Center. Uh, the the fellows on Star Wars Minute uh, found it, an old episode uh, pre Rise of Skywalker where um, where Jennifer and I were guests together mm. and we were joking about it. And uh, Alex repeat, I can't remember who said like, yeah, well there it goes. Ray is a Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a fun and interesting connection to me. So there's a lot that I actually like about yeah Palpatine's uh, uh, fighting style. It is the 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 one big CGI moment of the flips. Uh, for Palpatine, mm-hmm. it is the the suddenness of the uh, the other Jedi's death that, like, great. One has to just assume that he is this. It was that shocking. It was that fast. He is that good at manipulating. You think I'm going to move this way? I know all of your fighting techniques, but mm-hmm. and I know your openings in this space, and it's, you're, you're just not a problem for me at all. Um, you know, you, you yeah. just kind of gotta gotta work with that. I think. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. look. In my mind, I, I would love the extended cut where it's a thirty-three minute fight and he fights all four of them at the same time, and he and he's great. You know, like there's part of it. Yeah, sure, it's Palpatine. But why not see it? But that it's just. Uh, not what we're ever going to get. You needed to get it done in this amount of time, uh, I think. So, but I, but I agree with you. It, it, it does have some awkward beats, uh, but uh, and you know, I think also just feels so, especially for Kit Fisto. I mean, you, you go out that fast. It's it's a big loss, and I like Kit, so I was <laughs> would hope for at least a couple more shots. He does he does get at least like one in, right? He gets a little more than uh, Kohler and Tin. Oh, I al- I always cling to the fact that uh, Kit Fisto survives longer <laughs> than I was rewatching, <laughs> yes. like. By 2.5 seconds. Yeah, but at yeah. least, like, he parries a few times. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instead of just the immediate, like, uh, it, 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 there's almost, there, there's a head look uh, from one direction for the first Jedi who goes down. Like, it's almost like Palpatine's fainting to the side and they look over there and then just get stabbed in the gut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Which is fun in its own way. Um, the, I, I, for for realities of filmmaking, I think about the reworking of the fight, that there was a version where uh, Palpatine didn't have his own blade. Anakin was already there, he, and he took Anakin's. And uh, I never noticed it until I learned about it and went and looked for it. But if you really pause, you can see that there are some scenes where uh, the blade is red, but the hilt is Anakin's. It is the Skywalker saber, mm. if you look closely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and yeah, and I think the right decisions were made there. Doesn't, that yeah, doesn't absolutely. Sing to me. Yeah about restructuring the scene for sure Uh, absolutely uh great decisions but it is also one of those uh things where where there are realities of filmmaking and these things are all throughout um every star wars film i think that's you know some of the frustration when people are very very critical of pausing every little moment in in new star wars and like yep Mm -hmm. some of it's not going to track but yep hey you can you can see in Empire Strikes Back, if you freeze and zoom and whatever, you can see the the Company of New York logo on Luke's lightsaber, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this one, if you freeze, you can see it's Anakin's hilt. And I think a part of it is the movies are meant to be engaged with emotionally, right? And the fact that I watched this film uh, 
dozens and dozens and dozens of times, and I never noticed Anakin's hilt until it was pointed out to me and I stopped and looked for it. That, to me, says, at least for myself, that I was engaged with the film the way it wants to be. And then, yeah. you know, it's moving fast so you don't notice. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and then, yeah, yeah. And then now there'd be 13 uh, YouTube essays about uh, the lack of uh, cohesion and plan on this fight. But that's not, that's not go negative. We'll celebrate. Yeah, we'll celebrate. And in, in, in that spirit, uh, the other realities of filmmaking I think about, because we have some criticism, certainly, I want to absolutely co- uh, compliment the phenomenal set. I just, I love that deep red mm-hmm. and the ancient statues. Uh, I love the lighting and the sound design for Anakin's big decision, the, uh, the the lightning cracking and the flashes on his face and the wind. It just, yeah. it is so operatic and yeah. mythic and they sell it so well in the mm-hmm. design of the the set the lighting the sound uh, and i think yeah. about the great stuff too yeah no I mean, palpatine is this true gothic villain and it, it all kind of just works so nicely yeah the storm of fate so what are some favorite moments of thrill and emotion in this year fight here's one that i, I don't think i've discussed much uh, but especially when you slow down the fight and watch it when the Je- when the jedi enter they got some tough words from palpatine palpatine is sitting there and his his left hand, he's got a twitchy finger. Have you ever focused on that? <laughs> I have never focused okay. on the twitchy finger. He's because he's sitting there and he's saying all the words. You know, you, you've you've uh, you've shown up pretty fast. Everything's. I didn't write the exact quotes. So he's like, yeah, you're here already. And his finger's twitching. And it's almost like a it's almost like a, a a trigger finger. But it's like I'm like, is it nerves, excitement? Is it adrenaline to finally do this? Like he's like, oh my god, my whole life is built to this moment. This is great. Let's do it. Let's dance. Um, it could be totally involuntary, uh, you know, from from Palpatine, from McDermott. I, I mean, the actual performer there, but he's also such a he's <laughs> he's such a pre- pre- precise performer that I, I choose to believe he's like no 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 no. Palpatine would be kind of like I'm holding I'm holding steady. You, I'm I'm the old politician, you know. I'm ready to kill you. I'm ready. To oh, yeah. No, I muted Disney Plus, but in playing it as we're talking, and yeah, he is just uh, scratching. <laughs> Yes. Uh, his chair, like uh, the world's worst mosquito bite. Like, yes. leave it alone. <laughs> You're yeah. taking the scab off, Palpatine. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, you know, I'm just, I just have, fun. it's just a great little moment. And, and you know, uh, I would love to, someone at a con, ask McDermott that. Did you do that on purpose, whatever? And, and I don't care what the answer is. I'm reading his Palpatine's twitchy finger. He's ready to go. <laughs> he is literally itching for this fight because yeah. he has literally itching that is absolutely great mm. uh there's some classics here I, I assume that you are you are thrilled by uh let, let's hear them um i i like you know what i like i like all the jedi igniting their blades mm. it's it's uh and we know that that should be done or, or or should be thought about with with a certain amount of weight to it right is it's an important decision but but they're there for a big purpose they're there to end the war save the order who knows what they were talking about on the way there maybe mace was like hey you know maybe he isn't a uh, Sith Lord, uh, maybe Anakin's wrong and he's, we got to talk to him, you know, we got to have him the chance. I, who knows the conversations, but they get there and it's all business and the lightsabers come out and it's just one of those kind of cool Star Wars moments. No, it is absolutely great. And, and it is, if you track Clone Wars animated series in particular, Mace is one of the ones who keeps uh, expressing concern about pushing back against choices he doesn't like. Like uh, putting Ahsoka on trial, mm-hmm. but the Jedi can't be seen to be taking control. And this is, you know, the the you're under arrest, Chancellor. You know, yeah. in say, you know, the power of the Galactic Senate, like finally stepping up and saying, uh, "I don't care if you can manipulate the system. The mm-hmm. truth of the system is on my side, and I'm standing up for it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Moment. So it's definitely a, a thrilling moment. Uh, one of the absolute, of course, drop dead classics is the uh, the old Sidious voice coming out and saying, "I am the Senate." <laughs> it was next on my list because it's just wonderful. It means so much. It's and again, it is his truth. We're talking about Palpatine and his truth. That tw- twitchy finger. He's like, "No, I'm not twitching no more. I am the Senate." And it is so similar to "I will make it legal." <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Going back to that, like. <sighs> All of these uh, rules and traditions, that they, they, those are just a bunch of words. Uh, yeah. True power is to be taken, right? Mm-hmm. That's his perspective. And, like, these are just a bunch of rules that do-gooders made up, and I'll twist them, and I'll use them to twist them in knots, and I'll take real power. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. 
uh, it's treason then. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> For me, uh, continuing to do that to like, uh, I I will twist this around and and claim it's treason. And uh, we, we got to talk about it. Perhaps one of the best parts of this fight to me, the corkscrew of doom. I love um, it. I love right? it. Right? Right? Why do we love that so much, Ken? Because it's silly. I'll say this. I'll start there. It's kind of silly and over the top, which is this movie in wonderful ways. And I think it's okay for me to say, I, I, I feel okay saying that. Like, it is silly. It's like, what? what is he doing? This old man just spinning there? But also, yes, he's Palpatine. He is Darth Sidious. He's been waiting for this. And he's like, I'll show you what I got. And I've got my own blade, which is a guy, well, I think that's more powerful that it's been mm-hmm. there the whole time. Who knows? Who knows how, where he, what meetings he carried that in. I doubt he left it at home all the time and, and i just love that it is pretty it's it's violent it, it's it's it is over the top and it is kind of crazy and you could kind of ask well why do they need to do that and my answer is why not it's palpatine and he's spinning <laughs> yeah i think there's so much that's great about this i haven't read the novel in years but i think there's some stuff there about it being hidden in a statue and all that um but yeah the lightsaber coming out of his sleeve is just this uh, very specific like this the the hate finally revealing itself right uh this thing yeah. literally shooting out of his sleeve and spitting out that red blade and then going into just i think the reason the corkscrew of doom works and i don't care about the cgi is partially that just animal horrible unnatural snarl and sound right yes, and yes. the jedi literally do go back on their heels which is like okay yeah good defense but like yeah. I think there's this thing in life sometimes where you can kind of uh, come come to terms with a theoretical reality, right? Mm. The Jedi are on their way over going, is this pop- possible? It would explain a lot. Mm-hmm. If Palpatine is an actual Sith Lord, we have to arrest him. Uh, and, and accepting that truth, that's different to viscerally feel it, to suddenly see the mask drop, the red mm-hmm. blade out, yeah. and the person that has been directing... <laughs> This entire yeah. war, uh, this person who is the face of your government, that face falls and they are this twisting, con- contorting, mm-hmm. bellowing monster. I-, I think that's why it works for me is just like the horror of it. I'm almost feeling the Jedi being like, this was under our noses. Yeah. All of this hate screaming and spinning out of it at us. This was under our noses. He look, he he's a dragon exploding onto the city here. Not to yeah. mix my franchises, but it truly is. And it, and it's more powerful to me than Blade comes out, which you know that it's it's treason. Then is also up with Cersei Lannister's "I choose violence" uh, line. I think for me, but uh, he he doesn't say the blade doesn't come up, and he takes a few steps forward and says, "Let's fight." He ain't even waiting. He is truly a dragon exploding across the sky. And I think that, I, for me, in a little headcanon way, it does it kind of explain a little bit why the other three Jedi are like, wait, what What? went on? Oh, yeah, exactly. It feels like they are overwhelmed uh, like by just like a wave of hatred in dark side evil, and they are literally off balance. And then you get into all this sort of like style stuff of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. are they not sure how to fight against this style? And, uh, you know, is Palpatine just that much better? All, all that kind of great stuff. But the yeah. corkscrew of doom, uh, that is great. Absolutely up there. So what are some other moments for you? I, I jump ahead a little bit to, uh, and there's there's some great uh, Mace uh, Palpatine uh, moments and close-ups and stuff like you're talking about. I do love, uh, I really do love the shattering of the window. And, and, and I think at one point in my life, I may have been like, and then they even shatter the window. And I just want to go back and just, well, I don't want to slap myself. I want to, I don't want to enact violence on myself, but I just want to sit myself down and go ask yourself, what are you, what are you upset about? Uh, that, that, uh, the heights that you talked about earlier, this, the wind, the over the top nature. I keep going to that because I think you have to, as a Star Wars fan, maybe eventually get to a point where you could just embrace that. Uh, this over the top nature. This is the evil of the galaxy. And this is a key moment in his career and the saga. Uh, and so shatter that window, let that wind come in, add that danger. Uh, and I just love that it happens. There. Yeah, no, the, the window shatter is great. I think it's a great shot. It's my, one of my favorite mm-hmm. shots of the fight, just literally the way that they are spinning and the blades come out. And it's, uh, again, it sort of drives home that like, well, this is my nice view. From yep. in office of polite, responsible power, uh, and the window just shattering. It's shattering the space. It's shattering the illusion of decorum. 
you know, there's so much power in it as well as I just think it, it's a cool shot. It, it looks cool and it works. Yeah. Um, for actual throw moments in, in the fight, um, there are there are two great close ups I really like. Uh, there's this one where not even close up, but uh, Mace does a big uh, swing right. towards Palpatine, and Palpatine ducks. And then after it, he's got that handout where he's got a nice "come at me," <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, "come at me" hand and a and a look on his face. Uh, there's one moment where he kind of lets a breath out. We're like, "Ooh, yeah, God, yeah. This, is, this is you know." For everything that uh, one can maybe criticize about the throw of the lightsaber fight, Samuel L. Jackson is bringing it, and that's one yeah. of my favorite moments. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for McDermott, for Palpatine, there's a lot of weird faces that I like. But uh, after, uh, uh, I believe it's after they've uh, shattered the window, uh, the super joyful weird face, the one where he makes like the big O face. Yeah. <laughs> It really does. <laughs> yep. And then stabs at Mace by the window. It is just this gross, yeah. you know, like, just like, I want to tear your guts apart. Yeah. It's so, yeah. it's so weird. It's so big. And I love it. Well, yeah, which to me all adds a little bit to, to the idea that, that Mace gets uh, it's a legitimate uh, shot in there, too, that it isn't just Palpatine uh, playing a, a, a con here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So what are some other, uh, any other moments for you of, of thrill or emotion? I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I do love, uh, you may as hold Anakin back one last time. Just kind of that little, hey, there is a fun one works for me. But I, I you know, honestly, um, um, I, I think you do have to just, for me, you do have to go to the main event, which is mm -hmm. the line of lines. Yeah, just right. absolute line of lines. You know, he could have said, you know, power, man. Uh, you know, I like my power. He could have said so many other things, but no, power, unlimited power, perhaps one of the most memed lines in Star Wars. It's used, it's used against the film, or at least people try to use it against the film. Even Ian McDiarmid on, on record saying, yeah, Lucas just kept saying, go bigger. So I went as big as I possibly could. Uh, paraphrasing that, of course, but just, I, I love, I love it. I love the history of it. But again, this is what he wanted. There's excitement. There's glee. There's evil. There's everything. He thinks, and in many ways, he's getting what he wants. And I just love it. It's it's some of my favorite um, Star Wars. It's, it's just literally some of my favorite minutes in Star Wars is this whole fight leading up to that moment. Yeah. It, it, McDermott's comments, I, I'm sure they've happened in many places, but they're on one of the Star Wars celebration panels that I, I think you can still uh, probably look up. Uh, I think it was from uh, 2017. I, I could be wrong, though. Um, but uh, Paraphrasing, talking about like, and I did it quite large. Then I did it as large as I thought was possible. And then George said, make it even larger. And I wanted to do what the director asked, but I did have concerns about working again. <laughs> I'm super, super paraphrasing. That's yeah. the spirit that I remember of it. But it's, again, that just sort of great English gentleman man of the theater, yeah. uh, witty telling of, like, it was really weird how big he wanted me to go. Um, but when you see it, to me, I understand it. And, yeah. and for me, what I really, really love is uh, what I'm going to call the unlimited power sandwich. <laughs> okay, okay. Because unlimited power is amazing, right? But at the beginning, he's been selling, you know, how weak he is. Like, I, I can't, I can't oh, hold oh, it. I'm, oh. I'm weak. I'm so weak. Anakin. Please don't let him kill me. Mm -hmm. uh, and when Anakin makes the chop, then you have the first part of the sandwich, mm. the smile. That was like, haha, I'm not that weak. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I'm like, great, I'm going to do this. So he gets that smile and then he unleashes, right? And he, uh, he unleashes with the lightning, he unleashes with the line, uh, power, unlimited power. And then the final part of the sandwich, uh, the sigh. <laughs> yes. Yes. The sigh is just so like, oh, I've been craving root beer. I finally got some root beer. I've been craving root beer for 40 years and I finally got some. Ah, yeah. It's, it's so beautifully <laughs> over the top of like, I've been wanting to do exactly that mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. for decades. Uh, it's so great. Yeah. No. And including that is, uh, Building up to it too, the the lightning, everything, and and you know it, it's a little you know melodramatic, and the, oh Anakin, Anakin, and you see it, it's playing his face. One of the little details I love is when he you see his eyes, he's looking over at Anakin, kind of like uh uh, almost oh, is is he buying this? It's it, you know I have a Chihuahua right now that he, she goes on her back and is like please I submit, but she has these sideways glances because the moment you put your hair <laughs> your hand close, she bites you. <laughs> and watching this morning a new context on it because Palpatine is a dangerous Chihuahua. Wawa going, I am on my back. Are you looking at, are you coming close? Cause I'm going to bite you. I'm going to bite you. Cause I got a limited yeah. power. 
is this fool uh, buying my fake submission so I can <laughs> reel him in for a nice juicy hand bite? Yes. Ah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, I also do love you must choose uh, in Anakin's mm-hmm. face in the lightning storm. It, yeah. it, it, it's, you know, again, really trying to have clarity that this is this is all about Anakin's choice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it all it all f- flows into that big moment. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I did want to ask: Should Mace have tried to arrest Palpatine? He says several times that that is his intent; that mm-hmm. he is here to arrest him. Once he once he kicks him and and, and gets uh, Sidious to drop his lightsaber out the window, he does say again: "You know, this is over. You are under arrest." So yeah. that does appear to be his driving goal. But then he gives it up. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that it, it, and the mirroring with Anakin arresting Dooku in the fight we talked about earlier? Yeah, I think a little bit, now, we keep saying endgame, and this is now truly at an endgame point. And I think everything he's saying going in, I believe him. I believe it's true. I believe his intentions are to arrest him. All the things you're talking about of like, it's got to not just look good, it's got to be good. We got to do this right. We're threading a needle here. Uh, I think all that starts to go out the moment the moment, moment the, the, the dragon corkscrews across the office. But I think mm-hmm. once, uh, as you said, he kind of gives up that idea. I think everything he's saying is true. And this is something you and I have always talked about with Mace. A lot of the things he says are, well, you got a point. True. You see what's happening. You get the lay of the land. But what you do with that is sometimes his problem. But I, I think there's this big reveal here. Again, Anakin, if what you're saying is true, that he's a Sith Lord, we've got big problems. Let's go there. Oh, crap, he is a Sith Lord. Still got to arrest him. But, man, it, it, the more I think about it in his moments here with this reveal, uh, there, there truly would be no justice. And and this uh, he does have the courts. He does have all that stuff. So I think I don't think Mace is wrong. This is endgame. But it's dangerously uh, complicated uh, a gr- a gray area. Um, and, and I might lean towards striking him down. I, I might go that way. But by trying that, by Mace doing that, he's pushing the boundaries of being a Jedi to a breaking point. And that mm-hmm. pushes Anakin into destroying those boundaries. So therefore, I think with hindsight, you have to say wrong. But I think that's what's so wonderful about it. it, it including the Dooku Anakin one. In that moment, you're weighing both th- both things. And what looks like uh, uh, justice might actually be the quicker path, the one on the dark side. Uh, not saying Mace is pushing going to the dark side here, but it is... It is that balance. And, and again, I'll say if y'all haven't checked out that five issue Mace comic from a few years ago, it builds to this moment and teaches some valuable lessons before that would lead him to have this hesitation that mm-hmm. uh, uh, gives him pause. And I think it's an important pause to have. Um, but I think at the end of the day, he made perhaps the wrong decision, but I get why he got there. Yeah, no, I think that is what's so powerful about it because Mace is in an extremely difficult position. And yes, many times I've watched this and I imagine in my heart the way you, you I think, should in a good tragedy of what if they just did this? Yeah. <laughs> and I have imagined many times, what if he didn't pull back for that big hit? What if he just like poked <laughs> like yeah. six inches forward, just a little boop yep. right into, into the dragon's heart and we're done? Yeah, and the yeah. galaxy can live in freedom. I have definitely had that, uh, that just gut desire, right? But I think that's so much what Star Wars is about is sometimes this gut desire toward violence being the quick and easy solution feels right. Yes, um, yes. And, it, and it can even be bolstered with some logic, right? Because that's mm-hmm. what Mace is going through of like, okay, I know I should arrest him. I said I came here to arrest him, but I've seen how much he's manipulated the system. Like, all of these events that we get to see in the Clone Wars animated uh, series, right, are dropping into place in Mace's mind on the ride over here. Yes. And then he sees this just horrific darkness explode and, and slaughter uh, these venerable Jedi Masters with ease. And then he's thinking through the logic of, like, yeah, he, he does have everything tied up. He is going to wriggle out of this. Mm. And I just need to get back to, you know, the truth i know that i am a jedi i know i am defending the light side i know if he survives he's he can wiggle out of this and he can go on hurting people um but that is again this sort of fear of the future yeah yeah and i think mace lets his fear uh support palpatine's uh bs both sides are the same argument right mm-hmm. um and we get that in in the film of uh the of palpatine saying to anakin in the fight we discussed earlier that uh, he's uh, he's too dangerous to be kept alive. And then Mace echoes that by saying he's too dangerous to be left alive. 
which it, it isn't the necessarily the same situation, mm-hmm. no. obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but Mace's moment of fear and giving into the immediate answer of just end him instead of, okay, try to arrest him and see how it plays out and, you know, be, be cautious, mm-hmm. stay on the light side, don't give into fear and, and just kill him out of fear. Um, it allows Anakin to lie to himself. Yeah. Yeah. Opens the door. It opens the door to it, right? Uh, Anakin's truth is that he needs Palpatine because he can't live without Padme. But what's really telling about Mace's, you know, momentary uh, 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 weakness, I think here, is as soon as Anakin takes this action against Mace, he feels a moment of guilt, right? Totally. And 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 he's, what have I done? And Palpatine says, "Well, you did what you're fulfilling your destiny, and and." You know, uh, you you need me to to save Padme, and that's when he says, "I can't live without her." But once he goes through those those emotional truths, he immediately pivots to justifying he, his choices with Palpatine's lie mm-hmm. that the Jedi were actually treasonous, that they actually do want to take over. I think one of the we're not going all the way into that um, Anakin and in, Insidious scene, yeah, because yeah. uh, there's so much to analyze there, and it, it, the fight is really done, uh, but you know, when Sidious makes the argument of like, you have to go move against the Jedi at the temple because they will hunt us relentlessly. Mm. I think one of the least discussed parts of that is, and since it's true that Mace just wanted to take over, he just wanted power. The Jedi will move against the senators next. Yeah. They'll be willing to murder the senators. And Anakin says, I agree. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He is. He made this emotional choice out of emotional reasons, because he can't face the pain of even the possibility of losing Padme and what that would do to him. And he immediately starts contorting himself into lies Mm -hmm. to justify it, to create a logic, a logical system that justifies his awful choices. Yeah. And I I think this whole dance throughout about what is the Jedi way, uh, who is truly being treasonous, who isn't, when are rules and laws good to protect and represent our values and when can they be twisted and manipulated into uh, obscuring mm. a basic and obvious truths that whole entire dance in these scenes is just so complicated and so powerful uh because i think it, it gets to this really deep truth that we can make really really bad choices that if we look in the mirror and say honestly why you why did you do that we know the truth mm-hmm. but then we can use all of these sort of layers of manipulation to lie to ourselves about it. And I think it's fascinating that that's what Anakin does immediately after making this choice. Right from the get go. And, and it's so weak to me. And this is when, when I was talking about early on, when I had that, like, this is it, his fall is this. And some of that is, is, is this, you know, it seems pathetic. And I didn't grow up thinking of Vader as pathetic. I thought of him as this evil dark Lord. And, 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 but that's the truth. And that's the truth. Uh, and he is broken. He is weak. He is justifying his actions, and it's sad and pathetic. And, 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 and it would it would just stay there if it wasn't just so tragic for the fate of the galaxy and the people that it would uh, affect and lives that it would end. So I, I think it works on all those levels and hits me so much uh, over the years. It just hit me so much more deeper than than it did in 05. Yeah, and I, and I think Mace's actions make those things easier for Anakin. They're not an excuse. Anakin mm. made his choice, and yep. he and continues to make all of his own choices. Uh, but yeah, Mace's uh, sort of break, I, I think, makes it easier and, and powerful because Mace does need to stop Palpatine, and he might be right. Uh, yeah. But in that moment, you know, it, 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 I, I do think he should have tried to arrest him. Yeah, yeah. The end uh, of the day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, final thing that I think is a, a kind of um, a real world thing that I think about with Palpatine's manipulations of calling uh, the Jedi treasonous when it's obvious they weren't trying to take over. It really was that like uh, <laughs> Palpatine plays, uh, you know, uh, spends the entire Clone Wars. And this is so powerful in the animated series, pushing the Jedi and then go. But if you push me back once, <laughs> you're treasonous. <laughs> yeah. And the Jedi twist themselves in knots trying not to do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's this classic and horrible thing for uh, authoritarian groups in, in supremacy groups. That's that's hard to talk about, but I think it, it's true that there's this game always where the other that is being targeted by authoritarian groups is both inferior and really scary, right? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. The Sith believe they are more powerful than the Jedi. The Jedi lie to themselves and they let all their attachments hold them back. They're they're weak. They don't claim real power. So the Sith have every right to claim real power. But then at the same time, they're so scary and relentless. Yeah. And they want to take power for themselves. It's the classic authoritarian mm-hmm. justification of we are taking power. Mm-hmm. But if if this allegedly other weak uh, group that we've targeted uh, stands up for themselves in any way, uh, well, then they're so scary and terrifying that it justifies all of the authoritarian group's violence and hatred. Yeah. And I, just for me, this is, uh, mm-hmm. there's so many big ideas in the prequels and some of them are fun space fantasy, operatic mythic ideas. And some are uh, really upsetting and difficult real yeah. world power structure things. And, and that's why I value them so much because they work on so many levels. They, how do I say this? They sadly have become more important to the themes uh, in, the, in, in the last few years, I would think. Um, but uh, it's also why they're so um, uh, valuable, why it's important to, to study these films and engage with what's there and, and perhaps learn from them or, or get in, gain insight from them. Uh, I think everything you're saying is right, you know, and the, the, we are the Sith. We are the best. We're rule of the galaxy. Oh, man, we've really got to eliminate all those things because we're not as, as uh, we're not really as, as strong as we are. Uh, as we believe, or as I'm telling you, Anakin. So, yeah, it's all there. Yeah. yeah. So, out of 10 lightsabers fully ignited, how many lightsabers do you personally oh, give this fight? Man, look, eh, on the fight alone, similar to the Duke of Fight, I was going to go uh, in that seven range. But I'm going to again push it up to uh, 7.75. All right. <laughs> Pushing towards eight. Only, look, if Agent Kohler had got a couple more shots in, might have been an eight. <laughs> If he hadn't weirdly looked the other direction right yeah. before he was murdered. Yeah. yeah. So some of those realities I I, I don't ignore. Um, they're there. But because of everything we're discussing, because of the value of this fight, what's at stake, it is everything. I, I'll be pretty happy with a 7.75 out of 10. Uh, I, you are making just great use uh, out of a decimal point. Uh, <laughs> I'm going a full 8 out of 10. That's good. Uh, That's good. It, The actual lightsaber fight is, yeah, to me, it has a lot of things that I criticize, Mm -hmm. um, but it is so fascinating in its weirdness totally, (laughs) that I enjoy watching it. I don't think it's the best executed in any way, shape, or or form, uh, but I am still fascinated by it. Uh, But I I go so high because the actual duel, the conflict, the emotion, what's happening in this fight, the choices that are being made in this fight is one of the most pivotal battles Mm -hmm. uh in in all of star wars i think there is the prophecy of the chosen one and i think this is a moment where the prophecy could have been fulfilled not in that anakin walks over and he he physically dominates uh the sith lord but if he if he had been able to push past his own fear and you know and and stop uh palpatine's reign of terror not by murdering him but by locking him up by containing him Mm-hmm. He might have he had a chance to fulfill the prophecy. Now he doesn't take it. Uh, a lot of horror and a lot of time passes, and he gets another chance again. Yeah, love it, love it. Any any final thoughts for you on these two fights? Uh, no, I, this is a lot of fun to break it up. Uh, uh, you, you know, uh, it, it's it's Revenge of the Sith. Uh, you know, it, it gets such such good uh, a lot of good vibes for this dark film, right? It's, it's this uh, PG thirteen Star Wars. I love it uh, that this film is celebrated so much now. Uh, and then Hayden would tell you, Nah, it's always been great. Uh, and I think he's uh, he's not wrong because it's all there. It's all on the screen. And yes, there's some uh, warts, there's some bumps, there's some bruises, there's some weird looks from Agent Kohler. Uh, that's part of the charm for me. But it, don't let that uh, cover up the big things for you here. Yeah, absolutely. To uh, quote Hayden Christensen, it's a phenomenal film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really love the uh, the ideas in these fights. I love how they uh, connect uh, together. I love how they there's a lot in here that's about power and skill, mm-hmm. uh, but a lot of it is just about manipulation and choices, which is fascinating. Uh, final thing I'll say, I, I think we always try to be uh, very good about being clear that we're expressing our opinions uh, and we're analyzing the, the text and mm-hmm. sometimes what various creators say. Uh, to form our thoughts and opinions. I think there's a lot of stuff in here, as we've talked about, that uh, fans have lots of different opinions and takes on. And we always want to be clear that we're sharing our opinions and uh, insights. And if you have different ones, we always have respect for that. Uh, So with that said, uh, we are done with this magic of lightsaber fights. And we are going to return to discuss 
multiple fights still to come in this film, Revenge of the Sith. Ken, where can people find us? You can find us on Twitter at Force Center Pod. If you tweet us, uh-uh, Palpatine faked it. That's your opinion. We just might not respond to it. We understand. <laughs> uh, we are on Instagram and YouTube as well. Big live YouTube Q&A coming out at the end of July with us. We'll uh, tweet out the official information. Look for that on Friday, July 29th. If you're listening before then, uh, if you're listening later, go back and catch it on our YouTube channel. Facebook page is Force Center Podcast. We're available on ACAST, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcast. Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more merch available at tpublic.com slash user slash Force Center. And you can support us directly if you want at patreon.com slash Force Center. From there, get into our Discord server where you can talk Star Wars and then debate if Palpatine uh, let it happen or not nicely on our Discord or Discord with Force <laughs> Center friends. Uh, you can find me at Cadnapsock or go to cadnapsock.com for information on all things I'm doing, including updated comedy shows in and around LA, soon adding some in other fine states in uh, the United States of America. No international shows yet. I'm working on that passport, kids, and maybe I'll get to London to do some stand-up. Uh, Joseph, where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me on all the social media, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, is at Joseph Scrimshaw, and you can check out my website, josephscrimshaw.com, for links to all the other stuff I've done and am going to be doing. I will be doing a live stand-up show at the Great Convention Convergence in Minneapolis in August, so if you're going to be there, be sure to check it out. Info on that is on my website, like I said, josephscrimshaw.com. But for now, for myself, for Ken, for those two little magic words, do it. This has been Force Center.